The following program is an exclusive presentation of Bright House Networks. The Bright House Networks High School Football Game of the Week pregame show. Sponsored by Premier Equipment Rentals. Hello, everybody. It's week one of the high school football game of the week. I'm Kevin Keyes, and I'm your host for the Premier Equipment Riddle pregame show. Tonight's contest between the Highland Scotsman and Ridgeview Wolf Wolfpack will be a classic matchup between Southeast and Southwest. Had a chance to talk with Coach Mike Cruz of the Wolfpack, and here's what he had to say about tonight's contest. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Somewhat of a disappointing year last year. You guys went one and nine. Tell me about the expectations and the key players for you guys this year. Well, certainly it's not going to take a whole lot to improve on one and nine. Um, we'd like to get back where we're a factor in the league race and certainly in the playoffs. Our main leaders are Giannis Mallory, um, offensive line and defensive line and um, Tyler Dogans, who was first team all league last year, was only a sophomore. And then Tynell Robertson um, didn't get to play last year. He sustained an injury right at the start. And he won the league championship in uh, track and field in the 100 meters. So we have some people back, but maybe some people haven't seen them, and we're looking forward to this year. Giannis Mallory, 6'4", 260. He uh, certainly passes the eye test. What type of leadership is that young man providing for you guys? He's done a great job. You know, it's hard to be a leader sometimes when you're not a senior. That man kind of gets passed to you, and now it looks like um, as Giannis goes, we can go because he usually makes a path that even I could run through. Now, at quarterback position, you had a, a quarterback that played for you guys last year. Uh, is he back with you this year? No, we're starting a, um, a young man off of our undefeated freshman team from this uh, past year, Joe Seha, 5'9", um, 168 pounds, and uh, has worked very hard and has brought some excitement to our offense because he's not only somebody that can throw the ball, but he can also run it. So the wing T offense, will we see more of that for you guys uh, t uh, Friday night? Yes. Um, Tyler, uh, Dogans, Tynell, and then Zach Williams, who um, wasn't able to play this past year comprise that first group of running backs, but we do it by committee. Coach, uh, what did you see when you guys uh, scouted Highland? Very impressive defense. Um, they're three linebackers. Those three young men um, do a tremendous job um, blitzing, creating havoc in the backfield, you know, the whole bit. So we're, we're working on trying to contend with, with their pressure. How do, you, uh, how do you like the wing tee offense against the 30 stack defense? Well, I, I think there are some things that we can create that make them uncomfortable, just like there's, you know, vice versa from their point um, to us. Um, if you get outside those three linebackers, there's a lot of space. And, you know, when you do a lot of blitzing like that, it's kind of like Vegas. Uh, they didn't build all those casinos because gambling was profitable. <laughs> Coach, we talked about the defense of Highland High. What about your defense, and who should we look for for leadership on Friday night? Well, Travell Weatherspoon and Halami Kani Kani are the two inside linebackers, and they, they're kind of the glue that holds us together. Certainly, um, Tyler Dogans and Giannis will, will be involved, as well as um, Josh Williams. So that's kind of the people that make up the, the leadership portion of our defense. Classic matchup tonight, and even though the Wolfpack had a down year last year, we're expecting to see some different things tonight. Coach, thank you for uh, taking the time to be on the show and good luck. Thank you very much. All right. And welcome back. We're live here on the campus of Highland High School. Just a little over two minutes left in the junior varsity game where Mike Cruz's JV squad is up 12 to three. Uh, got a chance to talk to coach Tim Harnett about his squad's chances in the varsity game tonight. And here's what he had to say. Coach, this is your second year on campus here at Highland High School, my alma mater. What is the mindset, the philosophy of your program? 
Well, you know what, basically we're doing the same things we've been doing since we are at Bakersfield High School. You know, we believe in hard work in the off season, hitting the weights hard, uh, you know, having a great spring, working hard through the summer, and then when we get going in the fall, we expect everybody to be, you know, ready to go, in good shape, strong, and ready to go play. Let's talk about the players that you, uh, that you lost and who's going to take their place. Well, you know, when you lose a player of the quality of uh, A.J., Anthony Johnson, uh, that's a really tough hole to fill. And uh, we've got some young guys that have stepped up. And, uh, and Alan Roy is one of our running backs, and Joe Bolden is another running back. And we've got two quarterbacks right now that are competing at the quarterback position, uh, Tyler Johnson and uh, Matt Prosser. And they're both doing a really good job of kind of running the offense. So it really comes down to we're probably going to have to be a little bit more balanced than we were last year because last year we could really rely on A.J. to get those yards when we needed them. And now we're going to have to ask some other people. And, uh, we've got a receiver, uh, Sean O'Leary, he's a tremendous receiver out there that we can throw to. Yeah, and I've got a couple of senior offensive linemen, uh, Jordan Austin, uh, who plays center and tackle for us, Tyler McPherson, who plays the, our left guard position, and Steven Montsabias, who plays our left tackle position. All three of those guys have been uh, been in the program, played last year, so this is great. Uh, and they're doing a pretty darn good job. Let's talk about uh, Patrick Sua and John Oglesby and what they bring to your school. What a great combination. I mean, this is, I've had some great backers through the years, and these guys are right up there with them. I mean, they're quality backers who play, you know, uh, snap the whistle every down. They're going to give you everything they got, and when they get there, they're going to hit you. And I've got, so I've been real pleased with them. They've really done a good job for us this year so far, and uh, I'm looking for great things out of both of them. What's your base formation that you're going to run at most? Well, times? our base formation is, is a 3-5-3. So we're a stack. We run in what we call a stack. And it's something that's become popular the last few years, and I can see why, because you can do a lot of things out of it. It allows you to bring a lot of pressure from a lot of different angles. You can bring eight. You can bring seven. You can bring six. You can bring four, uh, depending on what your coverage is behind. And it's really a fun, uh, fun scheme for the kids. They enjoy it. You guys are coming off of a tough game against Harvard High School that you came out victorious, 7-6 uh, win there. Uh, tell me what, what that does for this team in, in a first, uh, first game win. Well, you know, it was one of those things where, as coaches, we didn't even feel good about the win, you know, right afterwards. But after it sunk in and we said, okay, we won, it was good. Defense was just tremendous. Had a great game. Uh, actually didn't allow the score. The score came on an interception uh, run back. Uh, so we were really pleased with the way that they performed. Um, but overall, we need to win games, and we need to win our preseason because, you know, in about four weeks we're going to be hitting league, and we want to have a little momentum going into the league. Coach, uh, thanks for taking the time to interview us, and good luck on uh, Friday night. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys coming out and doing our game. Thank you. That was Highland High School head coach Tim Hartnett, and we'll be back with a kickoff right after these messages. Get rid of your old gas guzzler and buy used at the Barber Honda's Used Car Super Center. With over 200 cars, you'll get superstar treatment and state-of-the-art service at the new Barber Honda Service Center. It's the absolute best in Kern County. Find a pre-owned, fuel-efficient car that's just right for you. And Barber Honda has the largest selection of certified pre-owned Hondas. Don't wait until gas is over $6 a gallon. Start saving gas and money now at the Barber Honda Used Car Super Center. 4625 Weibel Road at the entrance to the Bakersfield Auto Mall. ESPN College Game Day. You ready? I'm ready. The number one college football show. Expect the unexpected. I know you've done your homework on this. Absolutely. Every Saturday. It's always a fun place to be. So look at these I beautiful know, people. Know. This is heaven. Live from the nation's college football hotspots. These are the best college football fans in the nation. The guys, the predictions, and the headgear. Go Buckeyes! ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Saturdays at 10 a.m. on ESPN and ESPN HD. And log on at collegegameday.com. Jump into a Ivy Love. Jump into geology. Jump into culinary arts. Jump into a life you love. Jump into a life you love. Jump into music. 
with an amazing low cost per credit. Jump into a life you love. And financial aid. Jump into acting. Bakersfield College is more affordable than ever. Jump into a life you love. Jump into college. Your life's waiting, so jump. Bright House Networks presents the Bright House Networks High School Football Game of the Week. Sponsored by Barber Honda, Bakersfield College, and Premier Equipment Rentals. Hey, very good evening, everybody. Vance Palm here alongside Kevin Keyes and down on the field, Brian Adams. Week one of the high school football game of the week exclusively on Bright House Networks. We are way up, and I mean up on the east side, Highland High School, where the Scots will be taking on the Wolfpack of Ridgeview. A gorgeous, gorgeous late summer night, about a seven-eighths of a full moon out. And we have a nice orange sherbet purple skyline and all of Bakersfield below us. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Officially, week one, last week was what they call week zero, where we had the superstar studded football game out at Bakersfield Christian High School. Now we are official, it's legit, week one, and Ridgeview will kick off to the home football team, Highland Scots. We thank Kevin Keyes for the Premier Equipment Rental pregame show, and we are underway. The kick is up, and it's going to be taken at about the, whoa, wow, well, now the 15 yard line. Look out! That ball still loose. And the pack is on them. A botched attempt of a return out there. And uh, yee, yee. scary well, stuff to start off week one, Kevin Keyes. Well, that's what happens when you come on the east side. Things get a little uh, little shaky up here. I tell you what, on and my way home, up here. And that's the home and team. That's the home team. I, I tell you what, on my way up here, I, I came panorama. Brought back some great memories of, of, of Panorama as a young man growing up on the east side. It's good to be back here at my alma mater, Vance, the Highland Scotsman. Well, everybody, if you assumed he'd be waxing eloquence tonight as an <laughs> alumnus, he will be. First and 10 for Highland. And it was taken on the 15-yard line. Uh, we look forward to a wonderful season with you here, 2008. As we mentioned last week, we got the ball rolling with a big, big game with a lot of superstars out there. And tonight, we're kind of getting back into what our normal gig is here. Two great high schools here in the local community going against each other, meaning that last week we had a team from L.A. up here. Now, it's the Highland Scots with a long story tradition of great athletics going against a newer school, if you will, Ridgeview. And I say newer because Kevin and I have been around since Chuck Taylor Commissers were being played used in basketball. Nice hand off to the outside. and. Uh, Tell him while we got a short break here, why don't you give us a couple of the offensive names here? Yeah, the tail back there, they just carry the ball over the left side is Alan Roy. He'll be wearing number 11 tonight up front. They're going to be led by a pretty talented group of offensive linemen. Steven Bonson Bias is going to be your left tackle. Number 54, Tyler McPherson is the, right, uh, the left guard. At center, number 61, Joseph Dunwoody. Right guard is number 52. D.J. Lara and right tackles number 66, Jordan Austin. Already a third and nine, junior quarterback Tyler Johnson has an eye formation behind him. And look at this Wolfpack, are you kidding me? They gang up on him for a loss, so it'll be a punt situation right off the bat for the Highland High Scots and uh, Brian Adams down on the field. Our 10-year veteran, he is the nuts and bolts of this uh, broadcast team. Brian, good to see you tonight, how are things? Oh, things are great down here. Nice, cool, crisp, cool evening. Not too hot. We got to hope the kids got the Gatorade stocked up, electrolytes going, so we don't see any cramping. Very good, Brian Adams, big BHS driller, as we've known already. Kevin Keys, a Highland Scott, myself, and Arvin Bear. So uh, we have what we call hometown representation on Bright House Networks High School football game of the week. Pleasure to have you with us. We are just underway. Deep for the Wolfpacks. The Wolfpack look like that's, looks like that's Zach Williams. The punt is up. It's a boomer. It's gonna be a 
fall at about the 46 yard line. Takes a really nice bounce, and it'll be out of uh, play at the 36 yard line. That's Michael France, the punter for this Scotsman. He's a 6'2", 180 pound junior. Just great leg action. Did you say there. junior? Just a, a, a just a junior. Young man had about four, that's about a four second hang time down there, Brian. Can you return that? No, you let that one bounce right there when you're that deep, but you try to want to try to fill this and get that roll, but I like a deep long one. First and ten, Wolfpack. The handoff, nice tough four-yard run. The quarterback, by the way, is Joe Seha. Is that pronounced correctly, young man? Yeah, Joe, Joe Seha is a, is a sophomore, Vance. He came up from that undefeated freshman team that they had. They're going to rely on this young man. Video, the videographer here for the Wolfpack, I think Coach Bobby Sharp's looking at him to be a small forward here for the basketball team. This guy's <laughs> as tall as me, Josia. Handoff, look at this. Is that Eric Dickerson, number 29? Dante Malloy, that's a nice run. So we're just under the nine minute mark here in the first quarter. Wolfpack looked good on two nice plays already, but that brings up about third and five. Suwa is a name you're going to hear quite a bit. And Highland High School, everybody, to remind you, is one of those high schools that the loudspeakers, the PA speakers, are very close to where Kevin and I speak, uh, very similar to Highland High School. So you will hear, hey, look at this, Kevin. Got him to jump. Got him to jump. That'll make it third and one. Well, the Wolfpack come out in their, their wing T offense. Uh, Vance, you'll see a lot of, lot of guys getting the carry here tonight for Mike Cruz's offense. They're going to be led up front by uh, big right guard, uh, Giannis Mallory. Uh, remember him from last year. He was the center. They moved him over moved him over a guard this year so that they could take advantage of his speed and quickness as a pulling guard. Third and one. Hand off to Doggins. Tiger Doggins. Tyler Doggins is their returning uh, leader in the backfield. He was a, an all-area guy last year. Tyler Dogans. Oh, what a stroke of luck up here to have the videographer as part of the student body of the Wolfpack. If I butcher any names, I'll be corrected. First and 10, 8.20 left here. We are just underway in the first quarter. Beautiful, beautiful night. September 12, 2008, we are up on the high east side at Highland. First and 10, Wolfpack moving down the football field. The pitch again comes out to Malloy. Malloy hit hard at midfield and he's brought down at the 50 yard line. Had a chance to talk to the head coach for the junior varsity of Ridgeview and uh, he and I are old, old buddies. And uh, I said, kind of give me a snapshot of this varsity team. He goes, it's gonna be a good game tonight, Vance. I feel it's gonna be a very good football game between these two teams. It's a great job by uh, John Oglesby from his linebacker position to, to run down Dante Malloy. We're going to hear his name along with Patrick Sua called quite a bit tonight. Tyler Jout outside. Oh, the pitch is forward. It's completely thrown to the wrong person, but it's called a forward lateral. So the old watermelon pitch goes forward. Yee! That's a big that was, break. That's a big break for the Wolfpack there. Oh, man. That could, that could have easily been that could have easily been a lateral. Our Bakersfield College instant replay. Woo! Showed that one. That was that was scary. And had the Highland Scott defensive end saw that coming, that would have been picked off and gone for six. That brings up third and nine. So the tables have turned a little bit here at midfield. On a keeper, cuts up field. That's a nice run. Will not get the first down, though. So, Seha. That's the one thing that Coach Cruz likes about Seha, his ability to run the football at quarterback. He can throw it as well. But he's a kid that's just a sophomore advance. He's a pretty good leader for this football team. Looks like they're going to continue to go for it. Head Coach Cruz says, hey, we've got some momentum. We're moving strong right side. Oh, he's hit hard, and I don't think that's going to be a first down. What a great play. Malloy brought down behind the line of scrimmage, and it looked as though the Wolfpack were really starting to get on a skateboard and go downhill, but they are stuffed at the behind the line of scrimmage. And uh, first down Highland. Uh, Brian Adams at 
was exactly what the doctor ordered from one of your former coaches on the Highland side. Well, Vance, you're going against one of the better defensive coordinators in, in the history of high school football here in this area and Coach Harnett. And I, I just would like to think that there's not too many fourth down conversions that happened against him. Very good. All right, Kevin Keyes, first and 10 for the Highland Scots. Exactly seven minutes left here in the first quarter. Ball at the 43-yard line, shotgun position for Johnson. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, Kern County, can you say touchdown? Allen Roy, Highland Scots. Boy, he got a great block up front from the right side of his offensive line. 58-yard run, actually by the time the ball was in his hands at about a 62-yard run. Highland, six points. Man, oh man. Alan Roy showed some quickness there, Vance. He's 6'1", uh, he's 185 pounds, just a junior. Can you say junior? Wow. Coach Hartnett's defense, as Brian spoke up, comes up with a big stop the next play. A 52-yard jaunt by the big fella. And now the point after attempt. That's blocked. Six nothing Highland. And we'll probably see on our Bakersfield College replay. I'm hearing from the truck. No replay. So, six nothing. Highland High School just like that. Well, we're underway. I'm Vance Palm. I have Kevin Keyes next to me. Brian Adams down on the field. The week one edition of High School Football Game of the Week. Kevin, I want to thank you for stupendous, superb premier equipment rental pregame show. Got to talk to both coaches. I'm sure that's always a lot of fun to go out midweek and be on the field and watch these kids practice. But as importantly, you get to talk to these coaches. You know, it was just a great... Uh feeling to be up on this campus again. I, I was a class of 1980 here, and to see a coach uh, the quality of uh, Tim Hartnett changing things around here is, uh, is, is good. The Highland Pride is back. Tim Hartnett, you know, before he showed up, Vance, in three years, I think they won three football games, but just uh, in his first year, they were able to double that. They, they, uh, they won five games to the playoffs. Uh, as you know, lost in the quarterfinals to uh, to Hatchby, which went on to win the uh, the section championship. But uh, the attitude has changed up here on campus, and they expect to win. Six nothing, Highland. Long touchdown run. PAT was blocked, so now the Wolfpack from Ridgeview will try to even things up. And that's their kicker, Aguilar, Jared Aguilar. Ball taken at the 15-yard line. Tanel Robertson on the carry, and uh, not a bad return. It'll be first and 10 from the 27-yard line. I'd like to remind everybody, as we see our Bakersfield College replay, that this season, the games that will be chosen to be aired on Bright House Networks are going to be left up to you. The choice is going to be left up to you. Go to mybrighthouse.com. You go on, you do the voting, and that's where we go. Next week's game, next Friday's game, Liberty Centennial. Go figure. A mountain of votes for the Liberty Centennial game. That's already on the chalkboard. Say it. Nice four-yard run. Boy, Patrick Sue is just very impressive from his linebacker <laughs> position. He flies. He has a nose from the football. You don't expect anything different, though, Brian, from a from a, a coach who's been one of the best linebacker coaches in the area for a long time. If you think of some of the some of the linebackers that Coach Hartnett has had, Patrick Sue fits the mold. Well, he holds his own right with any of them, Van, I mean, Vance and, and Kevin. What I like about him, though, is he keeps his pad level low for a tall, big guy, and that's really key for him to make the stops that he does. Second and eight. First pass of the game is complete. Takes a hit from two Highland Scots, but he hangs on for the catch. Nice play out there, Tyler Dogans. Let's take a look at this. You know, Highland will gamble quite a bit in that 30-stack defense. 
they'll send uh, they'll send a lot of players and that's a great call by Mike Cruz and his staff to hit just a little slant pass over the middle take advantage of the vacated linebacker third and one uh, he was hit out there by Steven Gonzalez and also John Oglesby keep your eye on John Oglesby and can you say junior John Oglesby uh, grew up with his father he was a uh, an offensive lineman up here at Highland in the 70s, and I guarantee you uh, his father couldn't run like he does. <laughs> we have a timeout on the field, 521 left here in the first quarter. Let's recap uh, for those of you that are just getting to your televisions tonight. Highland is hosting Ridgeview, and the Scots were stalled on their first drive, and then Ridgeview on their first drive started to march down the field. They went for it on a fourth and two at their at the Highland 42-yard line, and a stop in the backfield meant Highland took over. The first handoff from the second series with a 52-yard jaunt down the field, touchdown for Highland. The uh, PAT was blocked, and that's where we stand now on a second and two on their own 37-yard line, the Wolfpack of Ridgeview trying to make things happen. Nobody in the backfield. Well, now there is, and he's in motion. Say how pitched it to him, but he's in trouble. A flag on the play. We'll find out what happens, but Tyler Dogan's brought down for about a four-yard loss. We'll see what the penalty flag is and see which team it helps and which team it hurts. It is a holding on the Wolfpack. I believe that'll be declined, and that's going to bring up fourth and about five. And they're going to punt it. Kevin Key's joining us for his inaugural year on television at Bright House Networks. Spent many years with Corey Costello on ESPN 1230. And now uh, we are the lucky recipient of Kevin up here. And Kevin and I are the lucky recipients of being able to work with former BHS great and UCLA Bruin, Brian Adams. So uh, I am fortunate to be up here. Coach Cruz right now is just laying in to Robert Mazuka. Mazuka getting an earful from Coach Cruz. And that's never a fun thing on a Friday night, is it? Well, Coach Cruz is, is uh, you know, this wing T offense, he's, you're gonna see a lot of tackle over unbalanced line sets we saw in that last play where they're trying to get outside on this uh, on this stacked uh, defense of Coach Arnett. The punt is up. It's a left-footed punter, by the way, in Tyler Dogans. What a nice bounce that is, and uh, stops up at about the 32-yard lines by Tanel Robertson, and that'll be first and 10 for Highland High School. So, exactly five minutes left here in the first quarter. Pleasure to be with you, Sun Bright House Network's High School Football Game of the Week. I want to remind everybody again, you vote for the games this year on mybrighthouse.com. You go on and you go to high school football, you click and you vote for the games you want to see. A week from tonight will be Centennial and Liberty. That ought to be a barn burner. Also, don't forget about you on demand. Send in your video, your movie, if you will. Send it to mybrighthouse.com. You on demand. Love it. First and 10, handoff right up the middle. He's met at the line of scrimmage. Nice tackle out there by Jacob Kelly. Jacob Kelly clogged up the middle, and uh, the young runner that we're looking at is Travell Weatherspoon. And uh, he's a senior, shouldn't say young, but he's a compact runner. And I was talking to the, one of the coaches from Highland High School, this advanced. Boy, he's entertaining to watch. He has the craftiness of a Peter Mitchell, but the moves of an AJ, and you know who AJ we're talking about. So if we can get Witherspoon out in the open, he's gonna do some damage. Let's see. Receiver split way to the right side, Kevin. Spread offense here by the Scotsman. They get O'Leary in motion. But they stay on the ground, and it goes nowhere. Big hit, penalty flag out there. They went to Witherspoon, and he is wrapped up and hit hard out there by Dogans, amongst others. Brian, we have not seen the ball go up a lot in the air. Um, we know both quarterbacks have good arms. We watch them in warm-ups, but right now they're sticking to the grass. Well, right now, fans, they're just doing a good job of trying to fit, see what the other defense is going to give, take or give them. And they're just being patient on the ground. There's no need to throw the ball if you're Highland so far. You had a 58-yard run for a touchdown, and you're doing pretty good to this holding call. 
but it's probably going to be declined. Now they're going to see the ball going to air, I think, and they have a good quarterback where, and some receivers, so I look for some good, uh, maybe a deep out or a hook of some sort to get the first down. Well, it's 180 degrees from last week. Every single play, that ball was going up with Montana and Carr. Third and a bunch. Looks like 12, but it's probably going to seem like a lot more to this Highland squad. In the backfield with him is Patrick Sua. Johnson sends Hensley in motion. Johnson has, oh, a big block from Sua. The ball is thrown up. Another big hit there. Could be short of the first down, so the pad is starting to pop now, but what a hit by Sua in protecting his quarterback. Woo! Nice tackle out there by Brooks. Uh, Here's our Bakersfield College replay, Kevin. Here comes the block. Sua! Sua! And here's Brooks come up and put another hit on the receiver there. Well, Josh Williams is the senior linebacker that came in from Ridgeview. He took a Sua! Well, no first down. High level punt. Zach Williams deep for the Wolfpack. Another flag on the play. Wow, look at this punt, Kevin. You're right. He's Michael taken. France. What a big yard uh, line. What a big leg on this young man. He's uh, he's fun to watch. Man, oh man, that was a big boot. He may get a chance to see him again as uh, we've got a false start on the on the punt team. They should bring it back and make him do it again. Brian Adams, your BHS Blue Crew has a bye this week. Liberty has a bye this week. Some of the bigger teams having buys this week. I hear there's a bit of a, a rally going on tonight down at Griffith Field. Know anything about that? Man, can you repeat that question for me, please? Uh, there's a, 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 a bye week tonight for the drillers, and I hear through the grapevine there's a bit of a pep rally right now on the field tonight. You know anything about that? No, I haven't heard much about that. I heard some. I heard something about this morning uh, at work, but I don't know the details on it. You know, but but Gola a great, does a great job of motivating those guys and, and bringing them together, the team. So I know he probably has something for the guys to do. First and ten, Wolfpack. Hand off. Robertson go, Robertson goes for about five. So you think of a guy like Gola goes down, beats Canyon on the road, then comes back on a bye week, has a pep rally. <laughs> well, you think they'd be out scouting some of the uh, talent around town, but uh, he's finding a way to do some team building. Tynell, uh, Tynell Robertson was a ball carrier there, Vance. Keep an eye on him. He's a, a, a champion 100 meter guy. Uh, so uh, if we see him get in the open, there he is Ooh. right there. Makes the tackle still on his feet. And gets the first down. Kevin Keyes on cue, on cue. The speedster takes the ball up the middle, takes a pounding, and still still does some grounding. Bakersfield College instant replay. He has a good look here. Wow. Ro Boy, he took a big hit out there from Steven Gonzalez. And Gonzalez, remember him from last year? When we had Highland and I believe it was Golden Valley up here for some big hits and Gonzalez was in on it. Under three minutes here in the first quarter. They go back to this beatster. Roberson gets about a yard there. So pounding and grounding here in the first quarter. A couple of pass plays, but right now both coaches, as Brian pointed out, content to kind of feel out the defense. They've Got talented running backs on both sides of the football, so it makes a lot of sense. You're watching Bright House Network's high school football game of the week exclusively on Channel 21, Friday nights at 10.30, and then on Sundays, on demand, Channel 300. So when Sunday rolls around, get on demand and get that baby going and start watching this stuff. And also you on demand, congratulations to Kylie Newworth. He uh, put his movie in, Dark Knight's College Angst. And can you believe that? He won 500 bucks, you on demand. Kevin, it looked as if you had something to tell me. You know, Vance, uh, in the, in the uh, pregame show, we talked to Coach Cruz, and he talked about the Highland defense and they, the way they gamble. You know, early on that first series, uh, Coach Cruz gambled a little bit himself to go for it on fourth down. It turned into uh, to a bad gamble, but it looks like his offense is back on track here. Say how it's back to pass. He's uh, can't find a man open. Decides to keep it. <laughs> Squeezed out about three yards out of that. Second quarter, we'll have some of our uh, 
traditional second quarter prognostications, a few predictions, if you will. As we mentioned, BHS has a bye week. Liberty has a bye week. Some of these schools getting ready for next week. I ran into uh, Rick Van Horn today at the Bakersfield City School District breakfast. He was one of the speakers that welcomed everybody. We and I had a chance to chat here for a few minutes before the event got going. And we talked about the Patriots and about the season in general, about all the other teams here. It's a, I think it's going to end up like we talked about, a lot of parity this year, third and nine. And uh, what a nice play this is. A beautiful, beautiful run. He oh, plays this outside. Oh, no. Fumble! What a play. Fumble! Zach Williams on the carry. There was going to be a clip called, but then there was a fumble. So it's going to be. Let's take a look at this on the BC Instant Replay. <laughs> Here's the big hit right here, block in the back. But here it comes, number three, Patrick Sua put his helmet right on the ball, Brian, the way it's supposed to be coached. Wow. Well, Ke well Kevin, you're exactly right, Kevin. The thing about a receiver is once you miss your block, flow of traffic will always come towards you, so you don't, you don't have to worry about turning and going back to help. Just keep going forward and pick off the safety of the linebacker. That's but right. But never as a receiver turn back, because once you turn back, it's an easy call. The only thing that good can happen is you might get in the way. But everything's going to be bad right there. When you turn back, you're dead. Block in the back, it's going to be a penalty against you, and then the, then the fumble compounds the mistake, so Holland's back in business again. Yeah, well, the, Brian, Brian uh, Kevin and I were watching the BCB play a second time. The ball just simply slipped out of his hands. I think he saw Sua coming. <laughs> he was trying to make a little bit of a move to get out of the way of Sua, and out it comes. So that was a wild play. And then on top of all of that, Hartnett decides to call a timeout. So... With 1.26 left here in the first quarter, we're going to see the Bakersfield College replay again. And, and here he comes up, Kevin, and it looks like he's about to make a move right here. No contact, and uh, whoop! He saw Sue yeah. coming at him. You know, hey, I don't have the ball. Don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> and, guys, you guys have both been involved in sports as players and coaches. Isn't it funny how it just seems like when something bad happens, it just kind of just compounds like your interest does? Just compound interest on mistakes. There was the block in the back, and then the ball pops out. And instead of just having a penalty and keeping the ball, now you're giving the ball to Highland. And Roy, I would see, like to see him get the ball again the way he blew out 58 yards earlier. Brian, last week I'm watching San Diego State move down the field, and they had the game to put Notre Dame away. The ball slips out at the one centimeter line and it was over Notre Dame marches down the field scores they intercept another one score so you're right it's uh, some of these mistakes can self perpetuate let's see if they take coach Brian Adams cue here and go for another long run let's see first and 10 126 left in the first quarter there's your guy Alan Roy showing a few moves <laughs> Roy gets stopped out there so that'll bring up second and about eight or nine. And um, been a, it's been an action-packed first quarter. A lot has gone on here for the score to be 6 nothing. A blocked PAT is what caused it to be 6 nothing. And Highland, one long 52-yard run as we see Roy trying to break free right there. And um, nice job by number 16, Robert Mazuka, in on the tackle there, 5'11". 171 pound defensive lineman. Tyler Johnson right behind quarterback. I formation now, Sua back there. Right behind him, will he open up the hole? We'll see, maybe, oh okay, they're basically just getting their receiver up on the line and too much time, too much time. O'Leary, another name we know up here on the east side. Didn't get up there in time, they would have had too many guys in the backfield and. <laughs> well Brian, you. You know Coach Hartnett very, very well. These are the kind of small mental mistakes that can uh, kind of get under his skin, huh? Sorry, Brian. These are the kind of small mental mistakes that can get under Coach Hartnett's skin, huh? Oh, yeah, Vance. And one thing about high school football, they don't have a play clock like you have in college and pro where the quarterback can see it. So he has to have it going on in his mind and have a clock inside his own body. So it's very difficult. But those are the little penalties, like you said, Vance, that put you back five more yards. Now you're second and 13-14 as opposed to second and eight. Nice big hole, he cuts through it, but the Wolfpack fill it up quickly. That's a nice hit out there by Travell Weatherspoon. So sorry, yeah, Travell Weatherspoon. 
puts a nice hit out there. And by the way, for all you Highland fans, Darrell Bolden is number 23 for the Scots. That's who I was speaking of earlier about the quick, shifty runner that runs like Mitchell and AJ. It was actually Daryl Bolden I was speaking of. My fault. I know that now because number 23 from the Wolfpack laid one on. That was Travell Weatherspoon. And that's and one thing that you don't like to see your running backs do is to jump over a pile like that when they're in the middle of the field. Oh, boy. Well, he's going to hop up. I think he just uh, had the wind knocked out of him. And um, Alan Roy, tough kid, 6'1", 185 pound, can you say junior? And uh, here he comes over the pile, Kevin, call it. Well, there it is right there. He leaves his feet and then Big Weatherspoon comes in, puts his hat right on the numbers, kind of catches him under the solar plex and knocks the wind out of him. Alan Roy's got to go take a break. Last play of the first quarter, if they get it off. They do not get it off. The quarter ends, and man, it was close. High school football, game of the week. The first quarter is over with Highland leads 6-0. Back in a moment. Send us your videos and be a star. Introducing You On Demand, exclusively on Bright House Networks. Send us a video of your family, friends, or pets, funny videos, short films you've made, or musical performances, and you could see yourself on demand. Go to bakersfield.mybrighthouse.com for more information and click on the You On Demand logo for details. So send us your videos and be a star. You On Demand on Bakersfield. On Demand Digital Channel 300. Jump into a life you love. Jump into geology. Jump into culinary arts. Jump into a life you love. Jump into a life you love. Jump into music with an amazing low cost per credit. Jump into a life you love. And financial aid. Jump into acting. Bakersfield College is more affordable than ever. Jump into a life you love. Jump into college. Your life's waiting, so jump. Second quarter action, third and 10. Tyler Johnson throws it a nice play. O'Leary has it, O'Leary makes a nice move. He gets to about the 48 yard line. He'll be shy of the first down. Excellent execution out there from Johnson to O'Leary. We see on our BC replay here, but they do not get the first down. O'Leary shows a little bit of speed out here in space. Little shake and bake move. Pick up a few extra yards there. Nice job by Tyler Dugans to Dugans make the tackle. puts the tackle in. Fourth and three, and they're going to have to punt this baby up. Michael France has become a very valuable part of their uh, offense here, and in many ways is the best part of their defense. <laughs> he gets them back there. So France waits for the deep snap. They send someone in motion for the punt. France, another high, high, booming punt, and that's headed out of bounds and uh, goes up at about the 27-yard uh, line. They give it to him at the, yeah, right at the 30. Okay, give it to him at the 30. So first and 10, Wolfpack. I want to remind everybody again, you decide which games we will be covering this season. Go on bakersfield.mybrighthouse.com and decide where the games will be a week from tonight. Liberty and Centennial game. That ought to be a fun game for us to call. And then as the weeks progress, you need to get on there and do the voting so we know where you're sending us. Us being myself, Vance Palm, Kevin Keyes, and Brian Adams, and our director, Bernie Johnson, and all the Bright House Network's crew. First and 10, Wolfpack. And a ball out there to Robertson. Well, I'd like to see Robertson break one here and see that speed. Tynell's a guy that can run the ball inside and out, but if he gets out in space, being the track star that he is, he, uh, he could be off to the races. Speaking of track stars, it was interesting to see what Michael Phelps has done for young kids that want to swim now. Now they want to swim. Hussein Bolt, I think, has a lot of people thinking they want to run now when they see the Jamaican 
coast in at a world record that most people our age probably never thought would get broke at all, let alone coasting through. Well, what a nice play out there in the open field. A nice tackle out there. And uh, I can only imagine that it's one player, Sua. Patrick Sua. All everything linebacker. We start to talk about Tim Hartnett and the type of linebackers that he has year in and year out. John Oglesby is another young man playing the linebacker position for, for Tim Hartnett. That's just an outstanding group of uh, four that he has. Nice football game up here. We just started the second quarter, high school football game. Pleasure to have you with us. Sorry about that. Kevin turned me off. He's probably already, he's already done with me. He's already had enough. <laughs> well, in trouble is Seha. John Oglesby in on the stop for the Scotsman. And just like that, it's a fourth down for the Wolfpack. So both offenses a little stagnant right now, not really getting the pr productivity that they'd like to have after a full quarter of play and feeling some things out here. But that's also a testament to this defense. Let's go down to Brian Adams. Brian, uh, your take on the first quarter. Well, Vance, the first quarter so far, both teams have tried to establish themselves with the running game. But this is why teams have to be balanced. And one of the things that you see on some high school teams is they don't have the ability to pass the ball. When you play against a defense like this where they're taking away your run, you have to be able to throw the ball a little bit to open some things up for your running game. And until they can show they can pass the ball, it's going to be a tough night trying to run the ball against Highland or Highland run the ball against the Ridgeview Wolfpack. Thank you, Brian. Knuckleball punt caught out there by Ashton Hensley, and he did a nice job to get it up to about the 42, 43 yard line. Sometimes those knuckleballers coming at you uh, can get a little funky by the time it gets down to ground level, but he did a great job put his body in front of it, trapped it, and took off with it. A lot of young returners would let that ball bounce in front of them, and, and Hensley did a great job of running up and catching that ball on the fly and picking up some extra yardage right there. That's a, that's a valuable play by the, uh, by the senior punt returner. I've commissioned Kevin Keyes tonight in the third quarter to speak of some of the Highland greats, including himself, a baseball player who went on to play at uh, Bakersfield College and went on to finish his collegiate baseball career at Long Beach State. So we're gonna uh, tap into some of your Highland memory as far as, I, this gives us a chance right here to go over some second quarter prognostications. A timeout, a timeout on the field. And so that gives us an opportunity to get into our traditional second quarter predictions. I will go down to our veteran. Speaking of all everything, the all everything driller. Brian Adams, ooh, look at this. Chad Greider and the West High Vikings. Tough task to open up his first game as the head coach against El Diamante and Visalia. Brian Adams, West High School at the tough El Diamante. I'm gonna take West High, I'm staying local. Big pick, big pick. Kevin Keyes, West at El Diamante. Uh, El Diamante is a school that's, that's picked uh, to fare well in the state uh, ranking. So uh, I'm going to go away from uh, Bakersfield and pick El Diamante. Thank you, Kevin. Mr. Adams has West. Mr. Keyes has El Diamante. First and 10 for Highland. Handoff out there to Roy. Roy gets stopped up there at the uh, line of scrimmage. Visalia Redwood at Centennial. Visalia Redwood at Centennial. Mr. Keys. I'm going to go with uh, the Northwest Centennial. Golden, Golden Hawks. Redwood Centennial. I'm going with the Nixon Troop. 2-0 Nixon. This game right now is being decided the line of scrimmage, Kevin. Well, just like last week, you know, uh, uh, Hartnett puts all of his eggs in the defensive side uh, of the basket there, so to speak. And, and, you know, last week the defense didn't give up a touchdown. Ah! And there's Hensley again <laughs> up the middle. This is going to be a foot race. Allen Roy gets in. By. Touchdown, Highland. Allen Roy. Unbelievable. Here we are talking about the battle in the trenches. And pow, the hole opens. And Roy bursts through for a 56-yarder. Goodness gracious. Brian, what'd you see? Vance, you know, again, they catch him with a, with a little unbalanced, and he's able to make one guy miss and then go the distance. 
I mean, really, he's only had the, the two runs have been touchdowns. That's all they've been able to do, two big runs. So it's just been a mental lapse just one or two times for since the Ridgeview Wolfpack that has them in the hole right now. Well, 100 yards rushing already, and uh, we're just we got 8.29 left in the second quarter. This guy could be looking at a 300-yard game here, Brian, if he continues. And he, Yeah, he only has to do it uh, every, every fourth carry. The early call for the Barbara Honda player of the game. Wow. <laughs> because of the block PAT, they're going to go for two, try to get this thing to 14. Nice play. That was way too easy. And Tyler Johnson just pitched it in there. Two-pointer good, and just like that, 14-0. So it's been a well-fought football game on the line of scrimmage between both defenses and offenses. But Let's take a look at this BC Woo! instant replay here. The Scotsman had three receivers. Oh, that's the that's the long touchdown round by Alan Roy. Shows speed there. Wow. Wow. Coach Hartnett has got himself a pretty good running back this year yeah and you know we haven't we haven't seen Daryl Bolden really who they've spoken of that much uh, Patrick Sua from 15 yards in to the goal line he's gonna be tough to stop obviously we see Alan Roy look out coach Hartnett has some offensive weapons on the ground 14 nothing eight and a half left here in the half with Highland up over the Wolfpack of Ridgeview. Kevin Keyes joining myself, Vance Mom here up on the scores. You know, at, the, at the start of the season, excuse me, Vance, Alan Roy was number two on the depth chart. You had Ryan Johnson was the starting tailback. He went out with an injury. And you, you wonder how good he is if Alan Roy runs this well. Wolfpack deep. What a nice boot that is. It's going to be taken at about the one yard line. Nice 22 yard run back, actually. <laughs> Not a bad run back whatsoever. All right. Stockdale High School at East. Just over the hill down there. The lights are on at East High School Bakersfield. The Mustangs and East. Two new coaches. Brian Adams, your thoughts, your prediction. Well, Vance, on that one, I think the Mustangs gallop to the east side for a victory. Oh, Kevin Keyes. I have to agree with Brian on that play. I think, uh, I think the Mustangs are they're hungry. They want to be they want to be fed this year. First and ten, Wolfpack in motion is Williams. Ball goes up the middle, carried out there again by Dogan. So Dogan's four tough yards. All right, so should be about second and six. Second and six. C.J. Durant is going to go in. Thought for a moment he was going to call the play, but Saya back in there on a second and six. 7:45 left here in the first half. Very good football game here in week one. Saya looks up, has a man open. Beautiful pass. Woohoo! What a pass, what a catch. Kyle Tynell wow. Roberson was the receiver on that. Let's Tynell take another Roberson. look at it. Go for it, Kevin, on a BC replay. Nice little waggle there wow. by Seha, the quarterback. Great effort there by oh, Tynell boy. Roberson, the track star to dive out and catch that, but there's a flag on the play. Illegal shift, that's gonna come back. That's a, a too bad for the Wolfpack. They finally get something going with 7.33 here in the second quarter. Seha, the sophomore, did a great job of putting that ball right where his receiver can catch it. Not bad coverage by the uh, Highland secondary, but well, the wind Off out of the nine. sails there, and Coach Cruz having to deal with that one. Inside, beautiful slant handoff, and uh, that's a good play to come back with, and just like that, a first down. So uh, Zach Williams takes the 
misdirected handoff, and uh, that's a nice play. Brian, what do you think about the gun on Seha? Could you say sophomore? Well, I, you know, I like it. I, I think Coach Cruz is, is, is trying to open things up a little bit to give some room for his defense. But look what a play like that did. Even though it was called back, it forced Harnett to maybe think about they might try to pass again and change the defense from being so aggressive against that run. It's a great point, Brian. Excellent point. Not that they're back on their heels, Kevin, but they have to kind of just guess a little bit now. A pitch! Oh, boy. So you take two steps forward, and then you take two steps back. Good play, penalty, good play, bad pitch. Wow. Well, that's what one of the things that happens in the wing T offense. There's a lot, of, a lot of ball fakes, a lot of ball movement, and when you do that, chances of uh, putting the ball on the carpet becomes greater. Second and 19, where are you sending us, Kern County? Where will you be sending us in two weeks? You vote, you go online, and let us know at bakersfield.mybrighthouse.com and say, hey, I want to send Vance, Kevin, and Brian to this game. Vote for it. You're sending us to the stock, the uh, Liberty Centennial game next week, and now we have a flag on the play. Took too long to get the play in. It's going to delay a game, and now they're going to be second and 25. So we're starting to see a little bit of sloppy play here by the Wolfpack here. Special teams again, Vance. Early in the season, we saw that last week. Special teams was a little sloppy. Looks like they're lined up uh, to go for it. They do. A little trickery there. They Tyler Dogans had nothing but the end zone in front of him. They had everybody fooled. They they came out. They <laughs> would have been a great call had they completed it. And he had a lot of room. Let's take a look at it here on the instant replay. Oh, boy, you talking about rolling the dice there, Coach Coach Cruz. Really rolled the dice there. Third and 25, that was a touchdown. 5.49 left in the half. Ball's going up the middle this time, and Coach Cruz said, let's punt this ball, let's try to put it back a little bit deeper and take another shot at it. All right, let's get back to our second quarter predictions. Look at this, your buddy Corey. Peyton up on ESPN 1230, or way up on the mountain. Garces at Tehachapi. Garces at Tehachapi. I'll give you both a few seconds to think about this one. And we'll get both your predictions after the uh, change here. Sua coming in hard to block it. Ooh, oh. they almost get it. They almost get it. And uh, if not for a decent bounce, that ball would have been about the 38, 40 yard line. It'll be first and 10. I think if Dogans would have been a right-footed punter, that thing would have been blocked. I You're think right. The... All right, Brian, Garces at Tehachapi tonight, week one. I'm going to take the Warriors in that one. Kevin Keyes. Inman's tough uh, to beat up on the mountain, mountain football. I'm going to agree with Brian. I'm going uh, to go with Tehachapi. You know, you talk about legendary last names up there going at it. Edmund, I mean, uh, Denman and Fanuki. Wow. The Denman Fanuki battle continues. Well, here's an opportunity to look at Daryl Bolden. That's who we were, the coaches were talking about. There's a pile up. Dogan's just the, a little uh, bitty guy, uh, Vance. He's a. Uh, He's listed at 5'4", 135 pounds, but, but he can scoot. And can you say? Sophomore. Here is the 5'4", 135 pound sophomore. This guy makes Pete Mitchell <laughs> look like Andre the Giant. <laughs> 444. In the half left. First and 10. Bolden again. No, sorry. A keeper out there. It's a nice little ball fake by Johnson yeah. there. 
Sure was. Keep the ball to the outside. South High School in Golden Valley. Hey, everybody, the first game in the history of Golden Valley under their new lights tonight. So South High School, the Rebels, many, many decades of history go to a newer school and play their first game under the lights. Kevin Keyes, South of Golden Valley. Well, I think Coach Rand and Coach Douglas have got a good thing going on out there this year at, at uh, South High. I think they might be the biggest secret in town. They've got a lot of talent out there. I'm, I'm going to go with the Rebels. First and ten, four and a half left here in this first half. Highland starting to get into the neighborhood here. Coach Hartnett doesn't want any mistakes. Wants to take advantage of this before the half. <laughs> They tossed it into Ashton Hensley. Hensley had nowhere to go from the second that he caught the football, had nowhere to go. He was collected instantly and brought down, and that'll bring up a second down. Brian Adams, the Rebels, playing the first game under the lights at Golden Valley. Well, I'm going with, with Kevin Keyes on that one. Rebels roll. Roll. Rebels roll. All right. All right. And... Our last prediction after this play, fellas, the North High Stor Stars up at Porterville. Second and three for the Scots. Bolden. Bolden's going to keep it, and he gets wrapped up. Matthew Prasser handling some of the quarterbacking duties now. Prather is a six-foot 160 pound, can you say sophomore? Now Coach Hartnett likes this battle going on between his two quarterbacks. Prosser's a kid that uh, will see a lot of duty tonight in the rest of the season. We got Johnson as a junior, Prosser's yeah. a sophomore. Not so bad. He's able to uh, kind of cultivate the ground here. Third and two. It's an important player for both teams. He's on his knee, still takes a whack out there. Tyler Dogan's got a good shot in, so no gain on the play. And uh, with this wind, a little bit of a tailwind behind him. You might, and, uh, might see a pretty good uh, field, field goal temp here. That might. Well, that was borderline close to a penalty there. He was on his knees, waiting, caught it, and Dogan's 45, came in. 45, 46 yard hey. field goal attempt. This is it. This is what I like to see right here. Talk so to Coach Martin before the game. He likes this young kicker. Jared Aguilar going for a 47-yarder. The snap, the hold, the boot. It is up, and it is no good. It was, you know, he just missed that ball. He didn't get all of it, and it still carried well. Wide left, but they say this young man has range from about 52 yards, Vance, and uh, he's got great leg whip. You can see there, just didn't catch just it. Just missed, yeah. Well, I, the reason I say important on that third and two is now that you know gives the Wolfpack an opportunity. 2.19 left here in the half. They're on the 20-yard line. You never know what can happen. Our Premier Equipment Rental pregame show, obviously brought to you by that company, Premier Equipment Rentals. They have joined in to help us this year with our pregame show and also these wonderful upright Scissor lifts that our cameramen are on. Steve. Kevin. Our two it, cameramen giving us these great angles and hope everybody realizes all the effort and the time and the energy that goes in to just preparing these fine Bright House crew members get out here early in the day and um, you get home at night, flick the TV on and it's ready to go. But a lot of preparation goes in under the directorship of Bernie Johnson. Nice to have everybody with us tonight. Buck 51 left here in the first half. Ridgeview very much like to get in the end zone or close enough to get a kick. Oh, oh, trickery everywhere. Brian, you're very, very close to that play. What'd you see? Well, it just seemed like they never got on, on, on board. It's like the pitches. It seemed to be a little bit off when they're trying to do things. But one thing that's hard to do is to do a reverse or anything like a that. Double when you reverse. get the penetration that the Highland front line is getting, it's very difficult to, to do something like that because they're blowing up plays that, on accident. Well, they tried to do a double reverse, and, and the first handoff wasn't even secure. So uh, that could have been catastrophic here 
given the football on the 15 yard line with uh, a buck 42 left. Final prediction, North at Porterville. Kevin Keyes, North at Porterville. Interesting matchup. Well, I'm gonna go with the Stars, Vance. Uh, a lot of talent. The stars might be aligned tonight. Minus Julian Dean Johnson, by the way, Brian Adams. I'm still going with the Stars. Very good. There's our second quarter picks. When people go on to man on Sundays, they'll get to see how smart you fellas are. Not very for me. <laughs> Kevin's the brains of the group. Oh, boy. Third and eight. Look at a lot of room, a lot of room. Dogans coming back this way. Oh, a nice hit out there. Dogans picking up some space. Dogans trying to get outside. Only thing that held him up was trying to get past his own lineman out there. Garrett Galinsky had done a great job. Galinsky out there trying to keep some more space for him and some big hits going out there. Our BC replay, Kevin, it's all yours. Well, as you see here, Brian, the one thing as a running back coach that you'd like to teach your guys is on contact, you hit and spin. Tyler has a great presence of mind to keep going forward to pick up about 15, 20 extra yards. Just needs one more block there to take it all the way, but just a great effort by that young man. Got a timeout on the field. And, um, you know, Kevin, you had mentioned earlier, we've had some players get their positions moved around on them. They get switched, and a lot of times, you, you'll have position changes on the line. Some guys will go from guards to tackles, centers to guards, vice versa, move it around. A great article on the front page of the Bakersfield, California today. A couple of players that uh, that Brian and I have called some games with this season uh, over the past uh, few years. And uh, a great piece, a great article on uh, Jacob Hickman and um, Richie Boland. Two, two players that are going to be centers this, uh, this uh, football game tomorrow on Saturday between Nebraska uh, and New Mexico State. Brian, it's great to see these two young players that played in the uh, Bakersfield City School District, Kern High School District, going at it tomorrow at the big stage. Oh, yeah, and that's the great thing about the, in our community. You get a chance to see some kids play here, grow up, and then get a chance to play on the, on the national level and, and get exposure nationally for playing football. And, and the great thing about it is these kids are student athletes, and these, a lot of these kids come back with the degrees and, and come back and contribute to the community. Excellent. Last year I was kicking it at the pad one night, and I turned on SCUCLA, and I got to see Mr. Brian Adams play, and I said, hey, that's my guy right there. Jason Oliver on the other side yep. of the ball. <laughs> that was the net. Sitting there, my, my daughter's trying to get me out of the house. Come on, Dad, let's go, let's go. And I said, hey, this is, this is classic stuff. These are my guys right here. A buck left in this first half, and the time's starting to tick away. Precious seconds, the Ridgeview Wolfpack would like to have that clock stop, but they can't do it. It's third and 10, and they are at the Highland 46-yard line. They would like to take advantage of that long run by Dogans, but time is clicking away on a third and 12, and now we have. Well, you wonder why they let the clock run down. They still have. I one thought they were out. out. My fault, everybody. My no, fault. No, they they had one timeout left, and uh, they're lining up. That's poor, poor clock management there yes. on the yes. part of the Wolfpack. Yeah. I, I thought that they were out before I saw them, before I saw the clock going down. And when I continued to see the clock down, then I just assumed, but they had one left. And uh, they don't need us pouring on, but with 44.4 left, now they lost at least, at least 20 seconds there. And- uh, Well, that's two two or three plays there. Of course. That, that if we get in hurry up mode, you might have a chance to at right. least get yourself in field goal range to put some points uh, on the board before you go into halftime and go in with a little bit of momentum. High school football, game of the week, that's what you're watching, and uh, bakersfield.mybrighthouse.com, that's where you want to go if you want to submit your movie. Dark Knight's College Angst won Kylie Newworth 500 bucks. He's a winner in the mini movie contest. All right, she's a winner. Sorry about that, Kylie, she's a winner. Halfback pass here. Little trick, he's got a man it open. Might happen, and oh! Just didn't have the oomph on it, and it's going into that wind. That uh, that Highland wind that we get up here is blowing right into it. Not a bad idea. It's 38 seconds showing on the clock, and it's a fourth and 12. So Coach Crew down there now talking to C.J. Durant and Josiah 
Well, remember here, if they get a first down here, Vance, the clock will stop. And they've got to hurry up, maybe do a clock stopper, Brian, and have a chance to, to run one more play and then maybe a chance at a field goal. Yeah, but the thing about it, if they don't get it, and let's say it's an incomplete pass, you're giving Highland a lot of field with one time out left and a field goal kicker with some range. And there it is. That's going to be good for the first down. That should flag stop down. the clock. But there's a flag on the play. Right where Seha was standing. Personal foul roughing the passer. Oh, boy. The Scotsman. And that's going to put him in the field goal range. So tack on 15 more. And now with 32 seconds left before half, a legitimate chance. But they better hurry up because once the referee spikes the ball, the clock's going to start. And, and Coach Cruz just told the guys that told the quarterback, showed him the clock to clock the ball. So clock I wouldn't stopper. be surprised we see it. Here we go right here. Better hurry up. They're going to go for a play. First. They're going to run a play. They're going to run a play. They got a man wide open over the middle. Oh, Great boy. job by Patrick Sua to knock that ball down from his linebacker position. So with 23 seconds left, we see on our BC replay, Seah comes up and uh, Seah Sua, the Seah Sua connection. Had a man wide open, tough break for the Wolfpack. So Sua knocks down Seah. And with 23 seconds left here in the first half, some excitement as the Wolfpack trying to get in. Seah has one running back behind him. He fakes it to him, look for some protection. Seah trying to get outside. He's trying, oh, a nice block out there. He's out of bounds. By Durant, does he get out of bounds? No, he didn't. He, uh, they don't have any timeouts, and I no, think this is going to do it. That play right there just cost them well, three points yeah. unless they can get a clock, clock stopper. Clock you got to get down and go. Better do it now. Three, three, better do it two, now. Better do one, it now. And, and oh. they stop it. They stopped well, it. It should be about point three, point two seconds left on the clock. Let's see if the officials are going to make them put that time back on the clock. They definitely have to do that. I mean, he definitely clocked it before the, the, the clock yeah. ran out. There they go. But the thing about it, They're going to give him point six seconds. Right. And we got to remember, he's a young quarterback, guys. We have to remember that he may not have the maturity yet to do some of the things we're talking about. Because you saw him get to the line and kind of look around. At that point, he's got to get everybody up and well, not they, worry about what the other team's doing and clock the ball. Wow, they gave him six whole seconds. So put one second on oh, okay. the clock. Okay, one second. Yeah. Very good. So, wow, we. So, the field goal attempt by DJ Hewish from 30, 31 yarder to get him on the board here, and it's woefully short. That's not going to happen. So, at the end of the half, Island up 14 to nothing. It's been a very nice first half of football. Brian Adams is on the field. Kevin Keyes is up here with me on Vance Palm. We'll be back with the third quarter of the high school football game of the week exclusively on Bright House Network, Bakersfield. Get rid of your old gas guzzler and buy used at the Barber Honda's Used Car Super Center. With over 200 cars, you'll get superstar treatment and state-of-the-art service at the new Barber Honda Service Center. It's the absolute best in Kern County. Find a pre-owned, fuel-efficient car that's just right for you. And Barber Honda has the largest selection of certified pre-owned Honda. Don't wait until gas is over $6 a gallon. Start saving gas and money now at the Barber Honda Used Car Super Center. 4625 Weibel Road at the entrance to the Bakersfield Auto Mall. Jump into a life you love. Jump into geology. Jump into culinary arts. Jump into a life you love. Jump into a life you love. Jump into music with an amazing low cost per credit. Jump into a life you love. And financial aid. Jump into acting. Bakersfield College is more affordable than ever. Jump into a life you love. Jump into college. Your life's waiting, so jump. With cooking, cleaning, planning, and homework to do, when it's time for TV shows, you might not make it in time to watch. So let them wait for you. You've got Start Over, powered by Bright House Networks, letting you restart certain live TV shows right from the very beginning, all with just a few clicks of the select button on your remote. 
It's free and included with your digital cable. So when it comes to time, you've got plenty of it. Start over, powered by Bright House Networks, making life easier. Welcome back to the second half up at Highland High School where the Scots have a two touchdown lead over the Wolfpack of Ridgeview. Vance Palm here with Kevin Keyes up top, Brian Adams down low. Kevin, your thoughts on the first half? Well, you know, uh, Alan Roy was the big story in the first half. Had two touchdown runs, both of them over 50 yards. Showed great quickness. He's a, he's a junior for Tim Hartnett's team. Uh, the leader uh, on offense for this team. On defense, defense Patrick Sue. <laughs> Patrick Sue and John Oldsby was the story up the middle. Great job defensively for the for the linebackers for Tim Harnett. Thank you, Kevin. Brian Adams, uh, yes, your, your thoughts on this uh, first half? Well, Vance, I tell you this: if you're Richard, you gotta feel uh, feel good that you're in the game 14 nothing. So I think they have some opportunity if they utilize the air game. They show that they can they can make some plays that way and maybe open up that running game that he wants to get to and let his speed take over. And then Highland has executed well on defense, and you think about it, two runs over 100 yards had them up 14 nothing. So uh, I think it's a great job on both defenses for the most part. Rich, you had a couple of mishaps, but overall, well-played game on both sides. Thank you, gentlemen. Bright House Networks High School Football Game of the Week, Week 1. I want to remind everybody, you decide where Kevin, Brian, and myself will be going every single week. Next week, you've already decided by voting online at bakersfield.mybrighthouse.com that we're going to the Centennial Liberty game. So that's where we'll be next week. But after that, it's open. You let us know what games you want to see. A very democratic approach to knowing where we're going to be going. Kevin, your coach, Mike Cruz, you're talking to your team at halftime. What are you telling them? If you're Mike Cruz, you got to tell your guys that, hey, you know what? We, if, if it weren't for two plays, we're in this ball game. You know, no need to push the panic button. Let's go out. Let's approach this thing as a team. Let's cut down on the mental mistakes that we made. We, we had a few pl big plays that were called back. It, it, had it been, not been for those penalties, we'd be a lot closer uh, in this game than we are. We're it, we're uh, we're not out of it. So that's a. Uh, that's my halftime speech. All right, give me your heart in that halftime speech. Hey, we got these guys where we want them. Guys, let's close it out. Let's step on their throats, you know. The philosophy and the mindset that, that Hartnett brings to this program is we expect to win. We got these guys where we want. Let's go ahead and finish them. That's the voice of Kevin Keyes joining us for his inaugural season on the airwaves of television. It's been a pleasure to have him with us. We did a tech run through two weeks ago at BHS last week was the real deal with Oaks Christian at Bakersfield High School, uh, Bakersfield Christian High School. And uh, you know, we saw Joe Montana leaving the game last week. We kind of joked about him texting and calling people. Of all things, you and I literally were right in along his pathway for you and I to get to the vehicle to get home. We talked to him. We said, hey, Joe, we call the game on cable. If you want it, let us know. He says, of course, you gave him your card. Have you heard from the Montana camp? Joe Montana has not. He has not emailed me, but I think it might have something to do with us dissing the greatest. Us? Well, us? Well, can we keys get to Harry? Here we go, Kern County. We see Joe Montana back there. We're you know, giving him the good word, and Kevin goes, and I said, hey, your boy looks good, Joe. And Kevin goes, yeah, obviously he got his, he got his mom's wheels. Oh, wow. Can't that was nice. <laughs> Joe looked at you like. <laughs> Then the very next morning, I see him on the sidelines at Notre Dame. So I think he's got some pressing things right now with his two kids playing. Oh, the ball's, did it hit his hands? Doesn't matter, it's out of there. It's gonna be first and 10 on the 20. Garrett Aguilar shows the, the leg strength that uh, his kicking coach, Randy Martin, said that he had. We talked to Coach Martin before the, uh, before the game, and he said that Jared Aguilar and Michael France, both of his, his kickers, were guys that could possibly play on Saturday. Said one of them was a pack tenner. All right. First and ten for the Wolf Pack. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Up the middle, nothing happening there. 
exceptionally well. All right. Say how Great the job. sophomore Great quarterback's going to come over to the sideline and get the play from Mike Cruz. They better, uh, they better hurry up. I think uh, you people at home are hearing what we're hearing. Brian Adams' microphone active and live on the Highland High School sidelines. He's over there talking to Coach Bucky, him and Coach Bucky going back and <laughs> forth, and we are the lucky recipients. Second and nine. Say I'm in trouble. Say I gotta try to get rid of it. No dice. He is fumble. fumble. Woo, boy. And the uh, the Wolfpack dodged a huge bullet here as we see Seha get pressure from the blitzing linebackers. There's the fumble on the ground, but a nice heads up play by his tight end, number 86, Tyler Josh, falls on the ball, and here come the Wolfpack. Third and 25. Oh, the defense now for uh, Coach Hardnett really stepping up, and uh, they have just stifled this drive from, from the very beginning, Kevin. Yeah, we can see there Jordan Austin coming up and putting, uh, putting the wraps on Dugans there. Fourth and a mile for the Wolfpack, and... Still seems like there's some confusion getting some players on. And when it was third and 25, <laughs> you think the punt team starts to think, well, we better start getting ready here. All right, there's the snap. It's low, he handles it, and a, a low burner. And that is going to go out of bounds, I think, right about the 36 yard line. So now the Highland Scots are going to have a great opportunity to get in the end zone from here. Well, this is something that you won't, don't want to give Alan Roy. And this Highland offense is a short field to work with. With the kicking game that they have, they're gonna, you, you would think, at least get three points out of this, but with the way Roy has been running the ball, this is right in his range. First and 10 on the Wolfpack 35 yard line. That's all the distance they have to travel to get into the end zone. Running backs on both sides of him. Handoff goes up the middle. They get maybe a few yards there. So uh, handling the quarterback duties again now to start off the second half is Prasser. Ashton Hensley is now the tailback for the Scotsman. Hensley's listed at uh, 5'10", 157 pounds, senior. This game started off with a 6 nothing stance for quite a while. It was a very evenly matched football game, and right now it's 14 nothing Highland, and they're trying to get in the neighborhood to start knocking on the door. Second and 10. Prasser again, this time on a keeper up to the right side. Cuts up field, Prasser. First down, Highland. Let's take a look at that replay. Prasser, great ball fake here to Roy. Keeps it around the outside, cuts it back up, gets a good block there. Nice footwork and pretty good speed by the sophomore quarterback. First down, Highland, and now they're, they're getting in the neighborhood. They're coming down the street now. Officials stopped the play for just a moment. They stopped the, the clock for just a second, but it's been restarted. So we're at 8.45 left here in the third quarter, just kind of underway in the second half. Nice first half of football. We are at Highland High School where they're hosting the Wolfpack of Ridgeview, an absolutely sublime late summer evening. From a shotgun, Brasser, and that's going to be a penalty flag, and they stopped the clock and then restarted it. It couldn't have been a delay of game from when they restarted it, is it? No, okay, illegal motion. Oh, man. Well. That's just the, the more of the same of what we saw in the first half. Yes. You, get the, you get the impression from both teams that week four, week five, these little snags just won't hit. Early in the season. Right. First and 15 now. They come right back up to the line. Prasser sends the player in motion. Shotgun. Prasser wants to throw. Has a man wide open. Should be a touchdown, and it is. Oh. 
And that's the ball fake that Prasser, you know, the great ball fakes that he's showing there that's getting the defense to, to fall asleep and just a great route there by the speedster, Sean O'Leary. Goodness gracious. And I, and I like the coolness of this young sophomore quarterback. He didn't panic. He threw that ball right on the money. You know, normally when you get a guy that wide open, yeah. you, you kind of panic. You but pull a Steve Sachs. <laughs> absolutely. Well, Brian, uh, that's about as easy as they get. I'm not quite sure you had them that easy in your days, but uh, that was a simple touchdown. Every once in a while, I got lucky and got one like that. <laughs> right. But, you know, Vance, right now, we talked earlier about Roy doing such a good job and the young man who he's met, whose place he stepped into. I have this young man with me right now and Ryan Johnson. Ryan, tell us so far what you see about your team. Um, I think they're doing real good defensively. The offense just need a little tweaking, but they're doing pretty good, too. Now, we know that you did a great job to battle back, to get back into school and get yourself ready to play, and then, unfortunately, you got the injury. Tell me how your, your team has helped you out working through it, and, and just let us know what, how you're doing. Um, the team preferred me to one of the best uh, knee doctors there was, but uh, everybody's pretty much helping me out. But I'm trying to... I'm trying to get back on the field. That's the time. You're going to try to get back on the field yeah. this year? Yeah. Well, I hear, I hear you got some skills, so we're going to look forward to seeing if you can get a chance to get out. Right. Good I luck in that rehab. Thank you. Brian, that's a, a, that's a fine young man you're talking to down on the field. He's battled back from a lot of adversity. Here's a young man that lost his mother at eight or nine years old, and then, you know, a few years later, his, his father passed away and was left to, to be raised by his older brother. His older brother did a great job. Uh, of, of trying to provide for him and, and his own family. And, and Ryan, you know, he, he's he's the first one to admit that he's probably fell into uh, following some of the wrong guys, but he's turned his life around. He's he's looked to coach Tim Hartnett for, for uh, uh, as a mentor. And this, this young man, Ryan Johnson, is, is on track to not only graduate, but to go on to play football in college. You know, and I think that's the great thing about the, the, the human spirit, Kevin, is that it has the ability to supersede and overcome obstacles. Well said. Sound like Lee Adams there, Brian. I, I, I should. I had enough lashing from him. <laughs> <laughs> tongue lashings, tongue lashings. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> you know what? It, I think it worked. Well, the kickoff after that touchdown, another one of the Tit for tat, good things, aggravations. Good thing aggravations that we're dealing with in week one. The ball upends and goes out of bounds, so Ridgeview will have some pretty decent field position to start off this series. We're, uh, we're in the meat of the third quarter here. We're up at Highland High School. You're watching Bright House Network's high school football game of the week. And it is on demand immediately on Sunday. So if you want to watch this game in its entirety and continue to watch it forever on demand, channel 300. First and 10, Wolfpack, need to get something going here. Played a lot better football game to have a goose egg up there. Dogan trying to make a move. Oh! Uh-oh. I think we've just hit, hit, we've just seen one of the hits of the year right now in week one. Jose Diaz came up and just put his helmet. Raza was the guy that came in and finished it off. That's a classic case of stand him up and Wait for your help, and, and boy, did he get some help. Nice job there by the Scotsman defense. Almost, almost getting the turnover. Yikes. Yikes. What a hit. And here they come. Now they're pumped up, but a beautiful play call out there by coaching staff at Ridgeview. Coach Cruz and his gentlemen staying in this thing, fighting it out. And uh, they almost caught Highland off guard there with that one. Brings up a second and 13. Well, that's the little belly play that you see on the wing tee where they give it to the fullback up the middle. Got a pretty good block from his center. And right guard, Giannis Mallory. What a hit. <laughs> Our director, Bernie Johnson, I know has that queued up. Super Sammy Bowman in the truck. I hope you have that number. We're going to see that a couple times. Third and seven. Handoff up the middle, going nowhere. Fumble! Tries to pick it back up. Ay, ay, ay. Tanel oh, Robertson in all kinds of trouble. The late whistle there. Boy, that's dangerous. They do get the recovery. So it's been a very rough third quarter here for the Wolfpack. And they had 
opportunities and uh, in the first half as well and uh, have not been able to capitalize and uh, towards the end of the first half they were close and didn't get it either. Here's a look at it, Kevin. Yeah, just uh, I don't think he ever got the handoff. Good job by the Scotsman all flying to the football. That's one thing that Coach Hartnett is known for is playing fast and fly to the ball. Roy, he's had a whale of a football game. He gets drug out of bounds at about the 30 yard line. Allen Roy. We dip below the seven minute mark. Roy does a great job setting up his blocks. You know, he, he started inside and has good speed to has enough speed to bounce it outside and pick up some extra yardage there. But the one thing we saw in there, we don't have it on the instant replay, but the man who ran him down was 6'4", about 270 pounds, Giannis Mallory. Second and five. Johnson back in at quarterback. Off to Roy. Roy, that's a nice matchup out there. Odrum Brooks. Odrum Brooks stands tall and strong up there, and he laid a hit on uh, Roy, so that's a nice contact. Yeah, Brooks is a pretty good tackler for, uh, for a cornerback as you watch him here on the BC Instant Replay. Fights off a block, comes up and wraps up, grabs cloth and pulls him down. Third and three. Wolfpack need to dig in right now. Only six and a change left here in this third quarter. And uh, they need to come up with a big stop right here. The Highland does have a nice kicker, but uh, Johnson from the shotgun. Will they go to the air? They do not. Off to Roy again. Roy looking for some space. I don't know if he got it. Well, that's going to be close. It depends on the spot here. It looks like they're going to give him a favorable spot, but there's a penalty flag on the play, Vance. Roy, 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 Roy. They keep going with Roy. Not a bad call. Laundry on the field. Let's see what the flag is. False start. Highland. So if it was a first down on placement, they're obviously going to take that one. And it looks like it probably was. So 6-16 left in this third quarter. Vance Palm up on top of the scorer's booth with Kevin Keyes and Brian Adams down on the field. Third and eight. Three receivers out to the right side. Tyler Nichols on the left side. They're gonna go to the air. Johnson looks, throws on the run. Flag on the play. He was mugged out there. Sean O'Leary. Outstanding pitch and catch that time by Johnson and O'Leary. It looks like this might be called back. Oh, pass interference against Ridgeview. That's going to give the Scotsman a first down. Let's take a look at this on the BC instant replay. Tyler Johnson, nice job squaring his shoulders upfield and throwing the ball on the run. Incomplete. The ball was incomplete. So it's tough break. And now they're most definitely in the neighborhood. 17 yard line, first and 10, under six minutes left to go in the third quarter. Wolfpack's going to have to really, really put up something special here on defense. Handoff goes to Hensley. Hensley brought down at the 15 yard line by a host of Wolfpack players, including Gabriel Ramos. Gabriel Ramos, one of the smallest backers out there on the field for the Wolfpack. They've got him listed. They've got Ramos listed, six foot, 229. Oh, he's That's small. Not small, not <laughs> small at all. When you said it, I said, all right. Well. <laughs> well, I think who I was looking at out there was the defensive end. Oh, no, he's outside linebacker. We'll catch his name here in a minute. Flag on the play. You can only imagine Johnson didn't get it off in time. Starting to get the old uh, Highland Breeze up here. 
Well, that's the one thing when, when you're up here on the hill, you're above the fog and get a nice, always get a nice breeze and everything flows downhill. <laughs> Well, now with the penalties, second and 13, this, both teams tonight have been the victim of their own circumstances with flags and penalties at inopportune times, and it's hurt them at times. Johnson, this time goes back to Roy, and the Wolfpack are waiting for it. Nice play out there, brought down by Kevin Cannon. They were waiting for it. Here it is on the instant replay. Cannon, nice job to bring up third in a bunch. So look at this, they were at the 17 yard line. I thought they were gonna almost start knocking on the door, but now they're pushed back down the street and they're on the 27 yard line with a third and 20. As Johnson jogs in and gives them the call. Will they go to the air? Roy's been damaging on the ground, but uh, you know they send out Perea and O'Leary out to the right, and now look at this, Roy in the slot. Oh, goodness. That's gonna be a delay of game against the Scotsman. It's gonna push them back. My internal clock just did not think it was that long. Well, that was quick. That what was do quick. I know? Brian Adams, they were stand, they were almost down where you're at on a second down. Now look at them. Vance, they sure are. I hope the Kern County, uh, Kern County officials have some ice for these guys after this game. They're going to be sore throwing all these flags <laughs> and sore elbow. They're going to have flagitis. Third and 29. Who'd have thunk it four plays ago or four flags ago? Johnson. Boy, it looked like it went right into the arms of one of the Wolfpack players, and it did. So Daryl Bolden gets popped, and the ball comes out. Got hit right, right as he got the ball. Bolden was tattooed. Let's take a look at it here on the BC Instant Replay. Nice oh. job by number 60, Nate Spurgeon. Highland hung on to the ball. Our first clue was that the clock never stopped. So um, France will now boot it, and he's well within range of kicking it down to 178 if he wants. Again, in motion, Nichols. And he's going to be hard pressed to keep that in unless he can angle it. Oh, what a nice punt. What a nice. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh that's a too bad there. <laughs> <laughs> John Oglesby booted it. Dog on it, Brian. He was right there to do the damage, but it went in the end zone. Oh, that was the perfect punt. You could have just ran underneath and caught that one. I mean, right there, they had, it had two chances. And then here comes the foot and kicks it in the end zone. You know, when you have a kicker with the leg strength of Jared Aguilar, you got to wonder why you don't at least give him an attempt at a 50 yard field goal if the ball carries into the end zone on the kick, you still get the ball at the 20-yard line. You got a little wind at your back? Got a little wind at your back. Who knows? Now so Robertson, Robertson, sorry, on the first uh, first and 10 for the Wolfpack. A little bit of life now back in the legs of the Wolfpack when they were staring down at momentum of that Highland offense. Now all of a sudden, they're back on track, hopefully. Here's a situation if you're Israel, you've got to Got to have your heads up here and, and feel good about the stop there. It's a good time to get your team fired up and put some points on the board. Oh. Dogans hangs on to a high pitch, catches with one hand, and gets about three, four yards out of it. Yeah, Dogans did a great job adjusting to the ball there, Vance. Not a bad, it was a, kind of a bad pitch there by Seha. Dogans shows his athleticism there to just to get the ball and he actually turned it in upfield for some positive yards, or at least to get back to the line of scrimmage. We'll dip below two minutes here in the third quarter. What a beautiful view up here. Always love calling the games at Highland and East. 
First and 10, they got the first down. Back out here to Dogans again. He has a host of uh, oh. pilot Scott's at him. Penalty flag on the play. Wow. <laughs> Did you see that? Dogans on the track team, not known as a hurdler, but a sprinter, but here does his best impersonation of uh, Don Longsinger, former Highland standout. Seven. Wow. A long singer notation here. Well, you said it. Well, we have a break in the action while the officials go over what this call is going to be. Kevin Keyes, I have a lot of good buddies, including yourself, that went to Highland High and a lot of great, great athletes. Throw, throw me some names. Wow, Donnie James. I remember Donnie James and Willie Renneveld in a re uh, heavyweight wrestling match in Highland in the gym. I was there. Remember that one? Oh, absolutely. Wow. We, I was we, a, we got him. Big Donnie got him in that match. And and when you pin Willie Renneveld, you're somebody, man. That absolutely. Was, uh, that was an incredible match. I remember that the, their wrestling meet. It got down to the final two guys, Donnie James and Willie Renneveld, in that small gym, and that was a oh, it was rocking. You know, Highland was really known for their wrestling program back then. Wow. Listen to Vance call this play here. First and 10. Wolfpack. Oh, just that's like that. It's picked off. Kyle Lamucci snuck right in there and picked it off. That was beautiful. Lamucci shows great awareness here to step in front of the passing lane. Ridgey had a little bit of momentum going, and just like that, Lamucci closes the door on him. Oh, my goodness. So tough break. Here we go back two plays. Here's Dogans. He's got a host of Scots at him. He jumps over everybody and picks up the first down. But on first and 10, Lamucci knew exactly, and I mean exactly where Asseja's pass was going. He stepped right in front of it and 50-yard line Highland first and 10. That drive was thwarted with one quick move by Lamucci. Oh, big hits going on out there. You can hear the oohs and the ahs from the crowd on both sides of the football field. Yeah, this game is really starting to get physical here as we take a look at it on the instant replay. Man, oh man, wow. that's a big hit out there by Yanis <laughs> Mallory. <laughs> and Bolden tried to put a block on one of the biggest guys, the smallest guys, 5'4", 130 going up against 6'4", 270. Well, there's a and foot. Uh, guess who won there's that? A, there's a foot and a 130-pound difference. <laughs> what's the big What's the big deal, Kevin? Well, he found out, didn't he? 130 pounds. <laughs> Second and nine, under a minute here in the third quarter. Presser looks, going to his right, has a man there, decides, nope, I'm oh, going to cut across nice here. Nice job of adjusting his route by O'Leary, and, and this is a classic example, Brian, of a wide receiver doing what he's supposed to do when his quarterback is in trouble. That's right, when the quarterback comes to you, you gotta come back to the sideline or come to the where he can make a passing angle so you can catch the ball, and if he's away from you, you go deep. But that's a good job of keeping his legs alive, but one thing that, that I'm watching is, is funny, is that now Highland's trying to pass the ball, Ridge you pass the ball, but they're passing now when the defenses are back where there's room to run. <laughs> where they're set up, you know, so that they're not really getting a good read on the defense with formation they're in and the numbers. As you see right now, you got five defensive backs, so it can only be six guys in the box. There's got to be room to run in that against those guys in the middle. Third and inches, Roy in trouble. Wow, thrown back for a nine yard loss. They had, I mean, less than a foot for a first down. No quarterback sneak, no nothing. That thing just got moved back nine yards. Last play of the third quarter. When we come back, we only have one quarter left in the high school football game of the week. Island up by three touchdowns. College football lives here, and because every game counts, you need the ESPN Game Plan pay-per-view package with key matchups and rivalries from major conferences. You'll get up to 12 out-of-market games every Saturday. Call your pay-per-view provider today for this special weekly offer, and you'll be all set for a great weekend of college football with ESPN Game Plan. ESPN Game Plan gives college football fans the games they want throughout the season, including games outside their local viewing area. 
Get rid of your old gas guzzler and buy used at the Barber Honda's Used Car Super Center. With over 200 cars, you'll get superstar treatment and state-of-the-art service at the new Barber Honda Service Center. It's the absolute best in Kern County. Find a pre-owned fuel-efficient car that's just right for you. And Barber Honda has the largest selection of certified pre-owned Honda. Don't wait until gas is over $6 a gallon. Start saving gas and money now at the Barber Honda Used Car Super Center. 4625 Weibel Road at the entrance to the Bakersfield Auto Mall. Fourth and nine to start off the fourth quarter. Wolfpack have stayed in this thing, albeit they're down 21-0, but they have had opportunities to fold and they have not. Look out. <laughs> Oglesby from Highland High School, number 48. Is that his number? 45. Just, he told Mr. Dogans, he said, hey, scoot aside, my man. Oglesby is, uh, is kind of known for his nastiness, uh, Vance. As we take a look at that on the BC Instant Replay, put, get out of my way. I'm trying to down this football. So, I'm sure his dad was a much nicer guy. His dad was a, was a, a gentle giant. You know, married one of the sweetest gals, Highland High School, Darla. Been married for over 25 years. They're gonna put this thing up and it is, oh. oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Hensley, the defender for Highland, went up for it, didn't get it. The ball continued to go through and Tynell Robertson, watch this, Kevin, yeah. almost six. Yeah, Tynell is a speedster. You can bet that had he come down with this ball, well, he would have been out of bounds, but he had room to run. Nice ball by the sophomore quarterback, Seha. We have a timeout on the field. First play of the fourth quarter and uh, a timeout called by Coach Hartnett. So uh, gives us another opportunity to talk about some of the Highland athletes. Take us back, talk about some of the uh, great athletes that have come through this high school, Kevin. Well, when you think about great two-way players like we're seeing tonight with Patrick Sua at fullback and linebacker, you got to think of Roman Aguilar, who went on to play at Bakersfield College. Star at linebacker there. He's now uh, assistant principal for West High. How about McClanahan? Mel McClanahan, another outstanding two-sport athlete. Set the home run record up here. Hit 16 home runs. Went on to, to, to star at Cal Berkeley at linebacker. Good, good, good call there. Second and 10 for the Wolfpack. We're up at Highland High tonight. It's where Kevin graduated from, so we're uh, tapping into some of the great names. Highland High School Athletics. Second and 10. Wow. Seahaw says everybody split out there. And fumble! Ball still loose. Woo! Boy, they're definitely going to have a, a drill next week at practice where they have to go through the gauntlet and hold on to the football. What we see right here, that's just, um, he never really had it. And a nice effort down there by the front four of Highland. They got to the ball nearly as quickly as the running back did and caused that fumble. Sorry I didn't get the name on that, young fella. But good work down there. You'll know who you are when that play comes up. <laughs> wow, third and eight, just like that. They had what could have been a TD. Now it's at a third and eight. Watch this front line of Highland and the linebackers. Incomplete pass, incomplete pass. Highland thinks it's a fumble, it's incomplete. Oglesby came jumping over the line. And that's the pressure there that you're gonna see from the Scotsman defense. They like to get after you. That's uh, one of the reasons why Coach Hartnett runs at 30 stack. He's got a lot of active linebackers and he brought them all on that play. See Oglesby there saying that the, it's our ball, but as you mentioned, Vance, that's an incomplete pass, and that's going to bring on Tyler Dugans to punt. Low snap, look out, trouble everywhere. Wow. Sua, Oglesby, and Tyler McPherson 
all over the Wolf Pack, and it results in a safety. Boy, poor, poor Tyler here didn't have a chance on this play. It's a bad snap, and all three of Five. Highland's linebackers were in on the stop at the same time. Hey guys, I'll meet you at the punter. That's what they said before the ball was snapped. Let's, let's all meet at the punter. Let's all meet at the punter's helmet. Well, Brian, geographically, you're a long ways away from that play, but um, no stranger to momentum shift, and it's been this way for Highland for the better part uh, of the second half. Yeah, I think you're exactly right, Vance. Had, nothing's really bounced their way when they've had opportunity to, to capitalize. It's been a penalty. And on that situation, the punter did a great job just to get the ball out of bounds he, uh, instead of giving up a, a safety instead of giving up a touchdown. Uh, I, I know it sounds, you know, I don't want it to sound gratuitous, and it's not, but the score is 23 nothing. but the Ridgeview has played better than what the score would, would, would indicate. They really have. But now... They're going to have to give it right back to the Highland offense. Barbara Honda is the longtime presenter and sponsor of the Barbara Honda Player of the Game. I see a very nice vehicle down on the south side of the football field, and that'll be out for the presentation that Kevin will make to the Barbara Honda Player of the Game. Last week, Mr. Boschman won it for his efforts against Oaks Christian. Tonight, it's going to be a tough call. It's not going to be a walk in the park to pick tonight's Barbara Honda player in the game. Not, right. not that it was last week, but, man, there's going to be some tough decisions that have to be made here. A short kick is going to be taken at the 40-yard line. Bolden, Bolden looking for a wall. The speedy Bolden trying to get out. Oh, he, he is upset. He wanted to turn that baby around and come back out. Well, as we mentioned, Daryl Bolden listed at 5'4", 135 pounds, and, He's exciting to watch when he gets the ball out in open space as you see him try to make a move here to cut this thing back. That would have been fun to watch had he been able to keep his footing because he did have some run, uh, room to run over here. Coach Martin told us, said, look out for this young guy. He's exciting to watch, and he almost had a break there. First and 10 Highland. Well, here's a chance for Highland to develop some of their younger players, and they got Bolton in it tailback gets the ball and he's got some room over the Bumble! left side and it looks like that Ridgeview is going to get the ball back and they catch a huge break here and is that Bolton down and Ridgeview does have the ball well, Bolden's down, but he's back up. Wow. Here's our BC replay, Kevin. And there's Bolden there. Just didn't hold on to the football. Good job by the Wolfpack to strip it there. And looks like number 36. Well, Roberson stripped it, a clean strip. It's actually recovered by Javon Hendricks, senior defensive back. We go again. And Wolfpack has another chance. And they got another opportunity. All right, first and 10, lone back behind Seha. Nice piece of running out there, strong piece of running out there by Zach Williams. So Williams comes out there and he had some nice help out there by Roberson to lay one on. Here's a good look at it right here, Kevin. That's just the classic buck sweep play out of the wing T formation. Nice job by Zach Williams to break that outside. Got a nice seal block by his pulling guard. Nice play for, by the Wolfpack. First and 10, nice first down. A lot of hit going on out here in the second half. Not that there wasn't in the first half, but it's picked up incrementally each quarter. Here comes everybody. Look out. Wow. It's the inside Sally play there out of the wing tee. And Jimmy, Jimmy Gonzalez 
Didn't fool anybody here as Gonzalez stops him for about a two yard loss. Second and 13. Seha, the sophomore quarterback, has Robertson behind him. Seha looks, throws a nice pass over the middle. Will he get to the end zone? It looks like he will. Kyrie Wilson, touchdown, Wolfpack. And you got to wonder, Vance, where was that play earlier? The sophomore, 6'2", 190-pound Wilson. A nice little quick slant right, route. Great job going over the middle. Catches the ball, and Johnson to the end zone for the score. It's a great lift right there for the Wolfpack. And Beautiful. Great pass, great hands, yeah. everything looked good. Well, there's a there's a combination there that we can see for a couple more years. Say hi to Wilson, both sophomores. And Coach Cruz wants to see that a couple more times tonight. Bush is up and it is good. So it's 23-7, Brian Adams. That was nice. Well, Vance, their, their biggest plays have been in the passing game. And again, they're, they're catching. One thing about a hard net team, he relies on the cornerbacks to be able to lock guys down because he likes to bring the linebackers and create pressure. So you have to be able to pass if you want to be successful against his teams when you, when you, when you go against them. And Cruz, I tell you, they have some athletes on there in Ridgeview, and they got a lot of potential, but I think they have to start believing in their passing game and just take what the defense is giving them. If it's passing tonight, it's passing. If it's, if it's running, it's running. But they have a potential to really be good and be devastating as they get their confidence and build because they have some guys that can make some plays. So they're going to have to really use their, their athleticism to their advantage. Brian, you're absolutely right. And what we've seen from a lot of the wing T teams around town is them making the adjustment and getting out of that wing T formation to spread it out. You've got to play to your personnel strength. And it looks like the Wolfpack's strength might be in a, in a, in a spread formation. Well, one of the things, Kevin, that, that uh, when I was talking about, you read the defenses, but in modern, in, in the way the game is played today on defense, with the different multiple looks and the way they create pressure, that's why so many teams just call the play at the line of scrimmage and read the defense and then try to go, because it's so hard to call your run, and you already have your run on, and they're stuck against the eight, nine-man front. So that's why a lot of people do that in, in college and high school. And I'm watching guys like the Texas high school programs. Everybody's doing that now to give you the best opportunity to score. Well, we saw that last week with Derek Carr at Bakersfield Christian. That's a great example of a kid that came up and audibilized and called his play at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and it's not that you're going to do it all the time, but you got to give the kids the opportunity to put you in the best situation to, to have success on that play. And right here on this, on this kickoff return right there, just a great job of getting upfield, kept the ball. But right now, you know, make Highland make a play. And the same thing for Highland. They've had success when they pass. It's okay to pass the ball on first down. It's not against the rules. They do allow you to do that. Spoken like a true wide receiver. First and 10, 9.25 left in the football game. Ridgeview has a little kick in their step now. I formation. Johnson hands the ball off up the middle. Tackled up there at about the 37 yard line is, was that Sue on the carry? Well, the way the pile was moving there, you would assume that that was Patrick Sua, but let's take a look at it here on the replay. It was Patrick Sua. Now that clock will start to speed by if you're on the Ridgeview side of the football, and for Highland, it's not clicking fast enough. Toss sweep to Roy. Ooh. Gets it back and gets a great block from his quarterback. Wow. It's not often that we get to see a quarterback block the way Tyler Johnson did on this play. But let's take a look at here. Nice little toss sweep, student body right. Roy decides to cut it back and watch this block here by Johnson. Wow. Nice job. Oh, my. 6'2", 185 pound quarterback. Looks like he could be playing on the other side of the ball as a linebacker. When I was down there watching the pregame, watching him throw, it's a man, that's a big kid right here. 
And now, of course, they're gonna go to the well. Roy still on his feet. Roy trying to get free, what a nice run. job by Roy, he's got some room. And he's brought down to the 23 yard line. That, that run looked like it was dead twice. And he battled to the 22 yard line and he continues to chop up yardage. Well, that's just a great second effort by this young man. Nice little dive play here. You can't tackle him by the jersey. Keeps his feet moving, nice leg pump there. Switches the ball to the outside. Uses his hands to defend himself and a nice effort there by number 11. Alan Roy, and can you say junior? Number 11 is an 11, well. junior. Wow. First and 10. Patrick Sewell, the ball carrier there. Excellent it. job. Inside the 10 yard line. Well. Repeat that one. Brought down by number 88, Josh Nice run out there. He is brought down by Ashton Hensley, but uh, I think the damage has been done on that long Roy run. That's that's uh, one of the old air out of the sails run right there, Kevin. Yeah, I love this combination that they have of thunder and lightning. The, the thunder being Patrick Sewell at fullback and the lightning. Lightning will strike twice, and Bolden and Roy. Hensley behind Sewell. Sua takes it, he battles three or four Wolfpack. And he's finally brought down out there by Josh Williams, but not until he yes. works it. Sua took him for a little bit of a ride there. He just kind of hung on until Sua decided to, to fall down. But, you know, we keep mentioning Patrick Sua's name as a physical, aggressive player, and he showed it right there with his hard running inside the tackles. Second and goal. Now it looks like Oglesby is going to get on the action. Oglesby opens up the line, the hole, and Sua comes in. So yeah, you've got six foot four, 215 pound Oglesby. Can you say junior? opening up the big, huge line for Sua. Touchdown, Highland. Let's take a look at this. A great kick out block there by Oglesby, and that was made right there by his fullback. You'd love to see that when you get down on the goal line, Vance. They went heavy, meaning bringing in the, the, the larger players, and, and that's, a, that's a tough task to bring down when you have 230 and, and, and 215 in the backfield. PAT attempt. Snap the hole, the kick, and it is a boomer, and it is good. 30 to seven, Highland. 30 to seven, Highland. Wow. Special hello out there to the linesmen tonight, moving the chains. Supervisor Mike Maggard and his brother-in-law tonight moving the chains, and they were able to stand and watch this one since it was a first and goal from the nine yard line. They had an opportunity to watch a couple of runs, and. Uh, uh, Mr. Maggard and his brother-in-law see this great play as well. That's Patrick Sua just lowering his shoulder, fitting for him to get the touchdown here. And he's, uh, he's getting it done on both sides of the football. He's made some nice plays on defense. Six fifty-four left in this football game, and now it's going to be all Highland. Oh, uh, Kevin, it's it was it was. Uh, in a lot of ways, I still believe this is an evenly matched football game, and now we're starting to see the depth and the talent by about four or five key players for Highland High School. Brian looks like the Scots. Well, are right. going to be a team to think about. Well, you know, I, I think they're going to have to clean some things up, and that's obvious by some of the penalties. And, and like Kevin said earlier, the, the little mistakes. But one thing about that drive right there, chuck it up to the offensive line, because they opened up some holes in that drive that allowed those running backs to make those plays and use their, their talents. Kickoff. Oh, this game has had a lot of heavy hitting in it, and it's not going to stop anytime soon with 6.45 left in the football game. You are watching 
Bright House Network's exclusive coverage of the high school football game of the week, Friday nights at 1030. And then on demand, Channel 300 starting on Sundays. So make sure you go on demand and watch it, as well as all of the other great programming on On Demand. We have Damage TV on a tank full, a day in the life of classic sports. It just continues to go and go. And also don't forget, you On Demand. Inside handoff, another nice look at that play. Here comes Ogilvy trying to chase him down, but a nice job of running out there again by Zach Williams. We've seen this play before with Zach, and it's worked well. Well, that's that Sally play that you see out of the classic wing tee. You normally see it following the belly, but they run it on first down there, and Zach Williams has had a couple of nice runs tonight for the Wolfpack. So Mr. Maggard and family will move the chains. And now it's first and 10 inside Highland Territory. We'll dip below the six minute mark during this play. Seha since Dogan's in motion. Seha with a nice play, looks up, has a man, and it's going to be, oh, just overthrown. That was well executed. Very nice looking play there, good looking route. And our own Brian Adams is gonna scoop up the pigskin, Brian. Well, I'll tell you, Vance, they got some potential on, on, on this offense to, do, to make some plays. Uh, Right there, a, a very close to another big touchdown play. Just a little bit out of reach, but a, a great opportunity. And I like the way they're mixing things up. And again, I, I, this is a team I wouldn't want to play later in the end of the season as You're they right. get things together. You're right. Well, that's one thing that Coach Cruz said in the uh, pregame show is that he likes the skill level and the talent of these guys. Dogans gets one or two tough yards. Vance, Mike Maggard is, uh, is a longtime booster up here at Highland High School. As we sit here and take a look at, at the lights here on campus, you know, for, for the first 25 years of existence here, they didn't have lights. They played all of their home games up at Bakersfield College, but had it not been uh, for the efforts of Mike Maggard and, and some of the outstanding booster members here, uh, we wouldn't be here tonight. So hats off to Mike Maggard and his family. Third and eight, there's that play again. They try to get free, gets the first down. Brian, Kevin, starting to accentuate what we're speaking of here. Well, Vance, right there again, that's the same class they play they call for the touchdown. But the reason why you see that run a lot at the next level because it's an easy throw and easy catch for the receiver and the quarterback. There's nobody really getting away. Don't try to throw it down the field 20, 30 yards and has to make a great play. But again, their ability to show to show the their ability to mix the ball up, run and pass is really impressive in the second half. Under five left in the ball game. They're going to the air quite a bit now. <laughs> Dogan's down to about the nine yard line. You get the feeling, Brian, that there's a sense of urgency by the Wolfpack, Wolfpack but it, is it a little too late? And I think that's what happened, Kim. I think they just waited a little, little too late to get to it. I think, again, you know, they're a young team, and sometimes you're confidence, but I, I think there's something they need to lead into in the weeks to come is the, this balanced type of attack. No question, fellas. This looks really nice this uh, last four or five minutes here for the Wolfpack. Now Hartnett's defense trying to dig in here. Look at this. Dogan lays his head down in there and hits it hard. Wow. That was a matchup between two hard hitters in there. Dogan's and, of course, Ashton Hensley. And uh, very impressed here with the physical play here. But I think uh, Dogan's won this battle here. And it was Hensley coming up, taking, taking him out at the knees. But I think to get back to live action there. Carries the ball right. Just going to be just short of the goal line. Dogan's de decides to lower his shoulder here, just about punches it in. Oglesby there on the stop. You okay? Third and one, third goal. Penalty flag on the play. Dogan's another junior, so a lot of youth in tonight's football game, and that's somewhat of an undercurrent of a theme, fellas, that we've had kind of just emanate from us without really realizing it. A lot of underclassmen on the field here tonight, and that bodes well for both programs. Both programs, fans are trying to thir turn things around. As we mentioned, the Wolfpack only won one game last year, and they are a budget proof team this year. Touchdown, Ridgeview. 
Dante Malloy carries it in. As you can see the BC instant replay here. Malloy comes in and kind of gets the vulture touchdown as Tyler Dogans did most of the work to get the ball down there, but nonetheless, the Wolfpack score and they'll take it. Augie Rezo came in with a big hit. He still took it. Wow, there's a lot of popping going on in this game tonight. The snap, the hold, it is blocked. It is blocked. Island High School just doing it on all ends. And uh, I believe. It looked like Alan Roy. Was that Roy or was that? I can't get that number from this far away. You know what? You know who that was? I think it was Michael France. The punter. Was it Jose? I thought I saw two digits on that jersey. And to think that it was the punter is a little crazy anyway, Vance, but I thought I saw two digits on that jersey. Well, the punter, the punter looks to be a pretty athletic guy, but the public address announcer says that it was Diaz, and we'll go with that. Nice job by Jose Diaz. They've got him listed 5'11", 150 pounds as a defensive back, so it makes sense. I'll take it. 3.46 left in the football game. Next week, you have voted that we will be going to the Centennial Liberty game. So that's where we're going. A reminder, you decide where the crew goes this season. You go to bakersfield.mybrighthouse.com and say, with your click of the mouse, Vance, Kevin, Brian, you guys are going here to call the game. So in two weeks from tonight, where will we be going? Let us know. Onsider and uh, ball goes out of bounds. Flag comes up. Look out, Carlos. Our cameraman, Carlos Anguiano, almost took one in the jaw. <laughs> Here it comes right at him. Carlos, 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 Carlos. Yay! <laughs> Get out of the way, Carlos. So next week, we're at Liberty Centennial game. Some nice games next week, and that's the one you've chosen for us. I want to remind everybody that tonight's game showing at 10.30 on Friday nights, and then will be available on Sundays, and there on after on Bakersfield On Demand, Channel 300. The Big Ten Network. On channel 119, the nation's first major college sports network in the country dedicated to covering Big Ten Conference athletics. Oh! Nice job now into the ball game. Number 64, Alfredo Bayaka for Ridgeview. They've got him listed 5'2", 226 pounds. So there's a miniature fridge, a miniature fridge there. So Al Bayaka. Call him Icebox instead of the refrigerator. The Icebox, for those of you younger viewers that have no idea who William the Refrigerator Perry is, he was a big, big football player for Chicago Bears years ago. Now we have the Icebox. Not the Xbox, the Icebox. <laughs> well, our leading candidate for Barbara Honda Player of the Game, Alan Roy, still in the ball game, taking the runs, and why don't we open up the discussion? Barbara Honda has been with the high school football game league for a long, long time now. A dedicated sponsor, the sales manager, Sam, is already back there leaning on the new ride. We give out the Barbara Honda Player of the Award, Player of the Game Award every game. Kevin Key's doing the honors this season. Brian Adams, your thoughts, please, sir, on Barbara Honda Player of the Game. Well, I think tonight, Vance, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to have to go with Allen, with Mr. Roy there. I think those three big runs, Set it up for me. Without those three runs, he doesn't. They're, they're not going to win this game. Third and seven. Oglesby takes the handoff, and he gets five or six yards. So Coach Hartnett right now trying to work some of these different options in Kevin to get prepared for the long run of the season. Uh, it's good to give uh, the next team that you're playing. Something to prepare for for the next week in practice. And when you see Oglesby line up at fullback, it, it makes you think a little bit. You might have to make some adjustments. Talking about the Barbara Honda player of the game, who do you like? Well, 
some obvious, you know, obvious discussions are going to go on about Alan Roy. Um, did a great job. Also, I wouldn't want to ever put it past John Oglesby to be involved in this. And we have a little bit of time to talk about it now with the fly going out. John Oglesby has just been a force all night long on this field, and he's caused the Ridgeview offense to kind of finally give in, if you will. Not give up, but just kind of cave in a little bit. And then, of course, Patrick Swa has also been a force. Um, I think I'm going to probably go with the easy pick tonight. Easy meaning the obvious with the big runs. Allen Roy, number 11. They go for the hard count here. Nobody jumps. Good job by the Wolfpack on a fourth and two. Good job. They try to do it again. Nobody does it again. Excellent, excellent patience by the Wolfpack, and they're probably going to take the delay right here. They don't get it to go. Everybody bent over. Good job by Ridgeview. So they'll move it back. Our director, Bernie Johnson, with the Barber Honda player of the game, is always involved in the pick. And his pick was Sua. Patrick Sue has been getting it done on both sides of the ball tonight. I, I think there's going to be there's going to be a few young men that wake up uh, in, in the purple and gold tomorrow and say, "Man, I'm sore. I've been sued. I've been sued." Sue showing it as a running back, as a linebacker, now as he a blocker. <laughs> now he runs onto the field. Says, "All right, I'll block somebody else." In motion on the punt. France, another big, beautiful, long punt. It's up, and it takes a nice, long, big bounce. And uh, for just a brief second, <laughs> Odom Brooks said, you know what, I got nothing to lose. Maybe I should do this. However, he'd have to face Coach Cruz. Not only would he have to face Coach Cruz, he'd have to face John Oglesby. <laughs> so our director, Bernie Johnson, with a wise choice of Patrick Sua. We've weighed in with Oglesby. And uh, a couple of other nice players tonight. But uh, the consensus has it that Alan Roy will be chosen as the Barber Honda player of the game. Kevin will be making that presentation after the game. And uh, it's a pleasure to have Barber Honda on with us again this season. Bakersfield College, thank you for being involved with our replays all year long and premier equipment rental for these great scissor lifts and being involved in our pregame show. And wow, what a big hit laid on there at the end of that play. And uh, that is Richard Hernandez. He's 5'6", 285. And also number three in on that play. Guess who? You can get sued or you can get sued. Both painful. You know, for Coach Tim Harnett to compare Patrick Sua to some of the outstanding linebackers of Driller Pass. He, he said that he was every bit as good as Chad Provencal was wow. at this stage of his career. Incomplete pass. The clock will stop. 14 and a half. Did, did I hear? Did I, I heard as good as Chad Provencal? That's what Coach Hardnett said I mean, in, well, he, in an he, early hey, interview. Hey, he, he, he would know. He coached them both. And, and he also said that he, he would compare them to. Aaron Graham, who went on to play at, at the University of Southern California. Well, then, you know, like I said, Coach Harnett coached both those guys, and when he's putting this kid in, the, in, in those guys' status, this, this kid has a lot of potential and, and will be a great player. They're still coming hard. Sua again on the tackle, and Oglesby, and that'll wrap it up. So for Brian and I, we want to thank you for being with us. Pride House Network's high school football game of the week. Week one is in the books, Highland 30. Bridgeview 13, when we come back, Kevin Keyes will be on the field with our Barber Honda player of the game, Alan Roy. Thank you for being with us, and don't forget to vote two weeks from tonight. Where will we be? We know that a week from tonight we'll be at the Liberty Centennial game. Back in a moment with Kevin Keyes and the Barber Honda player of the game on Bright House Network's high school football game of the week. Jump into a life you love. Jump into geology. Jump into culinary arts. Jump into a life you love. Jump into a life you love. Jump into music. With an amazing low cost per credit. Jump into a life you love. And financial aid. Jump into acting. Bakersfield College is more affordable than ever. Jump into a life you love. Jump into college. Your life's waiting, so jump.
Bright House Networks is Kern County's local sports leader. Only on Bright House Networks Bakersfield. You'll see Bakersfield Condors ECHL professional hockey. Bakersfield Jam NBA D-League basketball. Cal State Bakersfield NC2A Division I basketball. Three chances to watch it. Live on Channel 21 as it happens. Replay the next night or anytime on Bakersfield On Demand. Digital Channel 300. Get rid of your old gas guzzler and buy used at the Barber Honda's Used Car Super Center. With over 200 cars, you'll get superstar treatment and state-of-the-art service at the new Barber Honda Service Center. It's the absolute best in Kern County. Find a pre-owned fuel-efficient car that's just right for you. And Barber Honda has the largest selection of certified pre-owned Hondas. Don't wait until gas is over $6 a gallon. Start saving gas and money now at the Barber Honda Used Car Super Center. 4625 Weibel Road at the entrance to the Bakersfield Auto Mall. The Barber Honda Player of the Game. And welcome to the Barber Honda Post Game Show. We're here after the game where the Highland Scotsman manhandled the Wolfpack 30 to 13. I'm here with Sam Croft of Barber Honda where he will present the Player of the Game Award. And standing with me here to my right, number 11, just a junior, is Alan Roy. He ran for 162 yards tonight, had two touchdowns, but had two runs over 50 yards. And let's take a look at one of these runs here. Alan, tell me what you're seeing here. Uh, you know, uh, last week I wasn't really seeing the holes, so coach has told me uh, you see the hole and just go 100%. And uh, I was trying to improve on that this week, and uh, yeah. Yeah, well, you certainly got it done tonight. You know, I was telling a couple of guys up there almost 30 years ago uh, on this field, I wore that number, number 11, as the starting tailback here at Highland. Of course, I didn't run the ball half as good as you, Alan. Uh, congratulations, Sam. Here, as we take another look at, at Alan Roy, what are your thoughts on this, this young man representing uh, Barbara Honda? Well, it looks like he has a great ability to move the ball to the outside and the right hand uh, going down the field. I find that's a great technique. And uh, uh, it looks like he's going to have a lot of good, good, a good season doing this kind of thing. Well, Alan Roy is just a junior, and he is representing not only uh, Barbara Honda well, but he's representing the Highland High School uh, family and alumni well. And at this time, we'll let Sam do his job and present Alan with the Barbara Honda Player of the Game Award. Uh, well, Alan, looked like you got rid of the opening week jitters, and uh, now looks like Coach has got you guys all pumped up and you're doing a great job. So, uh, on behalf of uh, Bright House Networks and Barbara Honda, we'd like to give you the Player Game Award. Some other things in here for you, and congratulations on a great game. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And so th there it is, Kern County. Alan Roy is our Barbara Honda Player of the Game, and next week we'll be at Liberty, where the Patriots will take on the Golden Eagles, and uh, that's going to do it for Brian Adams and Vance Palm. I'm Kevin Keyes. Good night, everybody. With cooking, cleaning, planning, and homework to do, when it's time for TV shows, you might not make it in time to watch. So let them wait for you. You've got Start Over, powered by Bright House Networks, letting you restart certain live TV shows right from the very beginning, all with just a few clicks of the select button on your remote. It's free and included with your digital cable. So when it comes to time, you've got plenty of it. Start Over, powered by Bright House Networks, making life easier. Send us your videos and be a star. Introducing You On Demand, exclusively on Bright House Networks. Send us a video of your family, friends, or pets, funny videos, short films you've made, or musical performances, and you could see yourself on demand. Go to bakersfield.mybrighthouse.com for more information and click on the You On Demand logo for details. So send us your videos and be a star. You On Demand on Bakersfield. On Demand, Digital Channel 300. ESPN College Game Day. You ready? I'm ready. The number one college football show. Expect the unexpected. Well, I know you've done your homework on this. Absolutely. Every 
every Saturday. It's always a fun place to be. Look at these beautiful I know, I people. Love <laughs> this is heaven. Live from the nation's college football hotspots. These are the best college football fans in the nation. The guys, the predictions, and the headgear. Go Buckeyes! ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Saturdays at 10 a.m. on ESPN and ESPN HD. And log on at collegegameday.com. This has been an exclusive presentation of Bright House Networks.